Paul Stevens averaging 36 yards on six kickoff returns. Of course, uh, the reason for that inflated figure, a 95-yard touchdown return on a kickoff earlier this year. Washington defeated Wyoming 38-2. They defeated Utah 41-7. They defeated Oregon 21-17. Also, Fresno State and Oregon State lost last week. Here comes Trout's kickoff. It's high. It's deep. Fielded by Allen in the end zone. He takes two steps, puts the knee down, and touches it down. And so, the Huskies will start first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Husky quarterback is Tom Porras. He's a senior from Port Cunum, California. He's 6'1", 190 pounds. The fullback we told you about, Toussaint Tyler, 213 pounds. Joe Steele, the tailback, 210 pounds. The flanker is a freshman, Paul Skansky. And the split end is Ron Blacken. The center is Tom Tenure. He's out over the football as Washington starts first and 10 on its own 20-yard line. We're just underway here in Seattle, Washington. Long count with a man in motion by Porras, the quarterback. Quick pitch right side with a football steal. Steal is going to be tackled after an advance of one yard by Greg Meisner, who penetrated and got into that backfield and brought him down after an advance of only one yard on the quick pitch to the right side. Saw a funny formation then. They were in the I formation. They had a spread end to the left, the tight end in the slot to the left, and the flanker to the right. Then the, uh, the tight end who was in the slot went in motion to the right to change the strength from the offense left to right. Just underway no score huskies first possession second and a long nine at their own 21 i have formation with a wing back to the right split and left the wing back is in motion toward the wide side of the field draw play on the sprint draw steel cuts to his right out across the 25 to the 27 yard line where he's hit and dropped on a tackle there by terry white in run support from his left cornerback position that time steel on the sprint draw started to the left and then cut back against the grain and picked up good yardage to set up a third and about three situation at the 27 yard line is where the huskies have the football in their own end. Our booth is 165 feet up, and we're right over the field. Look at the splits of the offensive line of Washington. They're making the running lanes with their splits. On third and three, flanker left. I formation, two tight ends for Washington at their own 27. Quick pitch to the left side, steal with the football behind blocking. Comes out across the 30, gets the first down to the 31 yard line. Steel is met and dropped there by Hugh Grain, but not before on the student body left. He got the first down. Bill Neal helping on the tackle. We've said so many times how important those offensive splits are to the pit offense. Now, when you see that and you're on defense, when you get an offensive split, every now and then you have to take a lineman and try to penetrate him through a gap because the split is too great and they can't block back on him. You have to make things happen against these splits. Still carried for five. Now we have a first and 10 at the uh, 32. And the pass to the right side is complete, breaking one tackle. The man with the football gets forward to the 37-yard line for a pickup of five or six yards. On the far side of the field, Porras flipped that quick pass, and pulling it in on the far side of the field is Skansky. Skansky pulled it in. The freshman got it forward across the 35 to the 38-yard line. And that's where they spot the football actually closer to the 39. So that'll be a gain of seven, second down three. It was a quick out pass. It was so quick and on rhythm. We had no left corner back. Terry White was way to the inside. The man was clean open. Second down three at their own 39. They switched their tight end to the left side of the formation toward the wide side of the field. Split back on second and three. Porras takes, gives. Straight ahead with the football is full back to Sam Tyler. Tyler plows for the first down. And the Huskies are moving the football on the ground. Jerry Boyarski, the middle guard, made the stop on the play, but not before Tyler pulled his way forward out across the 41 to the 42-yard line where it's first and 10. Not as criticism, but the defense is playing very passive right now. The linemen are hitting the offensive linemen and sliding left and right to the play. Someone against these splits is going to have to start hitting the gaps to get penetration to cause things to happen in the backfield. First and 10 at the 42-yard line. Washington just underway, no score, has the football. With a flanker right, play action fake, rolling left. Porras, little quick pass, it's dropped by Toussaint at the 47-yard line. The fullback coming out of the backfield to his left had some room to run. But uh, that time, he just took his eye off the football and dropped it. Hugh Green was coming into the area, and I think that's why Toussaint Tyler decided that uh, uh, he was going to have to look upfield to see what kind of traffic was coming his way. That'll bring up a second down and 10. That was a rollout to the counter side. All the fake in the backfield went to the right. The rollout came left by Porras, the quarterback, to the weak side. And he had an opening for the pass, but Green really hampered him a little with the arms up. Ron Blacken is split to the left. Flanker to the right is Skansky, the freshman. Now he comes in motion to the left side. Porras, long count, takes. 
The sprint draw, cutting back. Here comes Steele, gets open at the 45. He's at the 50, and down he goes at the 50. On a tackle there by Terry White. He is short of the six by about a yard. And again, that play, the sprint draw, starting it to the left, and he cuts back to the right, and Steele can ramble, and that time he did for about eight yards. We'll call it third down and about two. This team has always been very unbalanced in their offense. They throw only about 22 times a game. You have to stop their rushing attack. That's where they beat you. 17 touchdowns this year rushing. Steele has about 20 yards rushing in this drive so far. Third and two. Huskies at the 50-yard line on the right side hash mark. Quick pitch to the left side. Steele behind blockers. He's going to get back to the line of scrimmage, and that is all. That's Jerry Boyarski, the middle guard, with help from Bill Neal that time. Hugh Green was there. We have a marker down. Great penetration by Reichert that time. The linebacker also, he forced the play. He came across, shot a gap. He forced the play. Had to be one of the big plays so far in this game to stop that third consecutive possibility of a first down. Now it's punting situation. There is no marker down. It will be fourth down, and the punter is Rich Camarillo. And he's standing at his own 36-yard line. JoJo Heath back deep to receive. He averages over 40 yards of punt. This time gets a flopper away. It's going to be short to the right, taken by the up man on the fair catch at the 30-yard line. Pappy Thomas pulls it in, and the Panthers will start their first drive in relatively good field position. No score first quarter. About four minutes and 12 seconds have elapsed. There's a break in the action, and we'll be right back. remaining in the first quarter. Pitt now will have the ball for the first time on offense. They have held uh, Washington. They have first and ten now on the 30-yard line going left to right. Camarillo, a 20-yard punt after a bad snap. He picked it up and got it away. Pitt first and ten at its own 30. Bowles flanker right. The quarterback, Tricano. Bootleg play. Back to pass. Here comes the heat. He gets out of the pocket. He's running at the 20. Giving ground at the 15, and down he goes. Tricano trying to get out of trouble. Had the pass rush behind him. Number 67, Mark Drew, was the man all over him. He spun out of there, appeared to have some room to get away, but all of a sudden when he gave ground all the way back to the 15, a 15-yard loss, and at that point he was tackled by Charles Lennon. Chris Lennon, I'm sorry, a tackle defensively in that 3-4 array of the Huskies. Second down and 25. Panthers backed up at their own 15-yard line now. After trying to pass on first down, couldn't get it away. Big Mac leans in there. He'll get only a yard, possibly two. That's about all. The Huskies were stacked up defensively to stop the run, and stop it they did. Big McMillan didn't have really a whole lot of room to ramble right there. Three down linemen defensively. Martin and Lennon tackles. Mays on the, on the nose guard. Now what is happening? They're staggering those defensive tackles. That time Lennon was one yard off of the line. The play went right at him, but because he was off of the line, the offensive tackle couldn't get to him. Third and 23, the Panthers at their own 17-yard line. Shift into the eye formation. Rooster Jones dots the eye. McMillan in front of him. Tricano long count with a flanker left. Now Jones goes in motion, the tailback, and back to pass, rolling left is Tricano. Looking, now he's going to hike with the ball. He comes out to the 20. He'll be dropped at the 21. And the Panthers now will have a fourth and 19 and will have to punt the football. Learned a great deal on that play, however, with a man in motion, Bill. It moved all the linebackers. The defense had to do something to adjust to the man in motion. Now, Wally English, offensive coordinator upstairs here, he will set a play for that kind of an offensive formation coming up in the next series. David Trout in the punt gets the snap from Anthony Magnelli. Gets the punt away. It's a beauty. It's high. It's spiraling long, driving the punt return man Lee back to his own 40. He's trapped in and he's going to go down. Emil Boris downfield under that punt made the tackle at the 37-yard line and that's where Washington will put it in play first and 10. No score, 8.50 remaining in the first quarter here at Husky Stadium, a crowd of 55,000 watching this game in sunshine. One big plus to this point, the kicking game at this point is in favor of Pittsburgh. We didn't expect that, but Camarillo for Washington got off a bad kick on a bad snap and Trout got off a very fine punt. 37-yard line now, Washington in control. 43-yard punt for David Trout. First and 10, Washington at their own 37. Flanker left eye formation. The quarterback, Tom Porras, the senior, takes, retreats. 
Looks downfield to pass. Here comes a rush. Fires, and it's intercepted at the 50-yard line by Lynn Thomas. Terry White has made the interception, and the Panthers have the football back. Maybe an argument. One official called it no good. One official called it good. I believe the man who called it good is going to overrule. He did. It's going to be first down now on their own 49-yard line. Call it the 50. It's closer to the 50. A big break for Pittsburgh. The turnover to pass the kicking game. Remember, we mentioned that early. So far, Pitt has the advantage. Terry White's second interception of the season. He took the ball away from Ron Blackett. Pitt first and 10 at the 50-yard line. Split the backs wide this time. Tricano Barks with a flanker right. Kenny Bowles a split in left is Clifford Moore draw play. Here comes Big Mac. He's to the 50. He breaks the tackle, but then he's nailed as he gets to the 47-yard line of the Huskies for a pickup of about three yards. Dan Fiddler, good block that time, but then the hole closed quickly, and linebacker Antoine Richardson out of the 3-4 came up to make the stop with help from Jerry McLean. Richardson, an outside linebacker. McLean, an inside linebacker. Boy, you have to be impressed with the hit they put on because they stopped Big Mac, and I haven't seen him stop too often this year. 195 for Richardson, the outside linebacker. McLean is 218, the inside backer. Ball at the 47-yard line. Wayne DiBartola in at fullback now, replacing McMillan. DiBartola carries off the left side, pounds in there to the 45 to the 44-yard line, where he's stacked up by middle guard Stafford Mays of the Huskies. Good carry that time, and a good hole opened up on that left side by center Russ Grimm, Dan Fiddler the left guard, and Bob Gruber the left tackle. Washington went with four down linemen then. They offset. Uh, two of their men, the tackle on the left and the end on the right. And because of that, they did a little curl pattern. They, they switched, they did a tango with the man on their side and they gave us stunts defensively. Third and a long four at the 45 yard line in Washington territory, no score yet. The Pats is trying to convert right now. I have formation, they put the tail back in motion. They give against it to DiBartola. He falls as he gets to this area of the sticks. Let's see where they spot the football. He looks to be inches short. He had the hole, he had the good blocking straight ahead, but then he got tripped up that time by Rusty Olson, a right side tackle, and down he went just inches short. Let's see what the Panthers decide to do. Randy McMillan returns to the Panther backfield. It looked like the artificial turf grabbed the toe cleat. The cleat right in the front. That caused DiBartola to go down. He was trying to cut slightly to the inside. He had the hole. He could have made another three or four yards had he not tripped. Now we'll see what Jackie's going to do. He says, go for it. Let's go and get it right now. Let's get the confidence. One thing to look for here, is your offensive line going to continue and maintain an offensive split, or do they come in tight? If they come in tight, they also bunch the defense and make it a little tougher. Two tight ends. An extra fullback in there. We've got a power eye set up fourth and a foot at the Washington 41. Here's the give. Rooster Jones dives in there and gets the Panther first down at the 38-yard line. The Rooster diving over the pile. Good blocking from his fullbacks, McMillan and DiBartola. Also up front, Grimm, Boris, May, Fiddler, and Gruber did the job. And the Panthers, with the two tight ends, Pryor and Dombrowski, get the ball forward for the first down to the 38-yard line. Boy, if I was a 180-pound tailback, there's nobody I'd rather follow than the Big Mac going over that offensive right guard. Big Mac kept his feet. He helped the right guard on that play, Boris, and they both went out, took off the linebacker as well as the nose guard. Single setback, two tight ends. Flanker right, the Panthers first and 10 at the 39-yard line of Washington, long count by Tricano. Short pocket pass. Fires over the middle. Kenny Bowles completed the 22-yard line. He was interfered with, no flag, but he still pulled the ball in. He beat cornerback Mark Lee, the Panthers, a big first down at the 22. That was a gain of 17 yards. Double wing formation, two tight ends. Spread in and flanker playing spread in and flanker both on the right and the left. They know that Washington plays man-for-man -man defense. The tight ends went down and out, took both safety men out of the middle, made the opening in the middle for Bowles deep on the uh, post pattern. They spotted it at the 23, the Panthers first and 10. They give to McMillan in heavy traffic, dives in there, and he is stacked up as he gets perhaps a yard, possibly two. Linebacker Bruce Harrell, a senior from Seattle, Washington. He's six feet tall, 220 pounds. He is the most active of the of the uh, Washington Husky defenders. He's got a whole bunch of tackles so far this year. Also, middle guard Stafford Mays helped to make the play. Ball at the 21, a gain of two, second down and eight. Staying with the two tight ends, double wing. Watch Benji Pryor on an out pattern, possibly. Second and a long eight against that 3-4 defense. Tricano with two tight ends and split receivers to both sides. 
Back to pass for Cano. Firing to the left side. He skipped one in low at the 13-yard line. Open at the 10. Running laterally to his left was Clifford Moore. He had beaten cornerback Lance Todale outside, but Tricano's pass skipped in low, hit at about the 13-yard line. Really a bad choice on the pass. Dombrowski had held up and gone down and hooked it 10 yards right down the, uh, the far hash mark. He was open on the inside. That time, Benji Pryor came back outside to the right behind Bowles, who ran the same post pattern that he caught a few moments ago. Do you run to try to set up the field goal? Again, we've got that double wing single setback on third and a long eight. Pitt at the Washington 21. Tricano back to pass. He keeps the sprint draw on the quarterback keep, and he comes forward, gets a couple of yards to the 18-yard line. The Panthers were setting up the field goal try. Tackle Doug Martin on the uh, quarterback draw play, up into Tricano, and the Panthers now have the kicking unit coming onto the field. Not enough patience by Rick. He, he hurried to play too much. If he had stayed in the pocket a little longer, those linebackers would have moved out farther to allow the deer, the tight ends to block on them. He would have had more of a hole inside. This will be a 34-yard field goal try for senior Mark Schubert with Scott Jenner holding. The Panthers trying to get on the scoreboard first here. Bad snap. We've got a loose football, and the Panthers dive on it. It'll go over on down to the Huskies. The ball came in low on the long step. Scott Jenner had trouble finding the handle. Both he and Schubert go for it. Jenner came up with it, but still the ball belongs to Washington, and the Huskies keep the Panthers off the board at 4.58 first quarter. Jenner is discussing it now with Grimm. He had difficulty handling the snap. No chance on the kick. There's a break in the action, and we'll be right back. Looking for real bad. He's had two intercepted, and he's connected on three touchdown passes. Jackie Sherrill calls Forrest the most improved offensive player in the Washington effort so far this year. They send a tight end in motion. That's Bale. To give against it, we've got a loose football, but apparently Washington has fallen on it. The Huskies dressed in their purple jerseys with gold pants and gold helmets. The Panthers in their road uniforms, their white jerseys, gold pants, and the blue and gold helmets with a pit script on the side. Jeff Pelusi got in there to jam things up that time as Tyler could try to come forward. And so the... Uh, Ball is spotted at the 28-yard line in advance of one. It'll be second down and nine. Huskies line up in the eye formation with a split end to the left side. And that is Blacken being covered by Lynn Thomas. The flanker, Skansky, is going in motion. Now we've got a give to Steele against the motion. Steele cutting out over the 35-yard line is upended as he gets to the 38. The Panthers come up with a football, but I believe the play will be whistled. No, they say the Panthers have recovered a fumble by Steele. And coming out of that pack with a football, I Terry believe, White. Terry White comes up with his second big defensive play on the afternoon, and the Panthers are in business, first and 10 at the Washington 39-yard line. I'm not so sure he didn't steal the ball, Bill. They all hit over there in a pile. One thing that Joe Steele is doing, he's finding the hole to the back side. Everything is rolling to the left on that offense of Washington. He's finding the hole on the right. He's breaking back, which means Pittsburgh pursuit is overrunning right now. Pitt first and 10 at the Washington 38-yard line. Center Russ Grimm out over the football. Tricano, option right, busted play, spins out of a tackle and falls forward inside the 35 to the 34-yard line. So what appeared to be a developing loss on the play turns into a four-yard gain thanks to a fine effort by Rick Tricano. He's tackled by Derek Harvey of safety. Artrell Hawkins now replacing Rooster Jones. Rooster was either in a slot position or he went the wrong way. He was to be there to get the option pitch. Tricano wisely saw that he wasn't there and didn't pitch it, and that's awfully hard because that's so automatic. Second and six at the 34-yard line. Artrell Hawkins, a junior from Johnstown, in there. Here comes Randy McMillan on a slant, and he gets inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. He's short of the first down, but he got good yardage that time thanks to the blocking of Dan Fiddler and Bob Gruber and Russ Grimm off that left side. Fletcher Jenkins, the left side defensive tackle for the Huskies in pursuit, made the stop on the play, and it's close enough for a measurement. While they measure Bill some scores, Baylor leading Army 34 to nothing in the second quarter. Navy trailing Virginia 7 to 3. That's the second quarter. Tennessee leading Alabama 17 to 7 at halftime. Nebraska over Oklahoma State 9 to nothing at uh, halftime. Uh, Notre Dame has lost to Southern California 42 to 23. Southern Cal beats Notre Dame. Oklahoma uh, is trailing Kansas State 6 to 3 at halftime. And Michigan leading Illinois 14 to nothing. That's uh, in the third quarter. 
Golden Panther fan and uh, pit football follower Ed Novelli and his wife Janet made the drive all the way from Spokane today to take in this football game. And they say hello to everybody back in Pittsburgh. Third and a foot at the 28-yard line. The Panthers give to Randy McMillan. He plows in there and gets the first down. He gets to the 25. Dan Fiddler threw a great block on the play. He pushed his man right up out of there. That would be right tackle Rusty Olsen. Fiddler just pushing him out of the way. Derek Harvey made the stop, but to no avail. The Panthers, needing just a foot, got three yards and have a first and ten on our business at the Washington 25-yard line. We have 3-10 left of the first quarter. The clock is turning. We have no score in the football game as yet. Eye formation. Shift out of it now to a wide set position. Tricano with a flanker left on first and 10 at the 25-yard line. Option left, Tricano to the wide side. Pitches back. Rooster Jones behind a block. He's at the 20. He's knocked out of bounds on the far side of the field, just inside the 17-yard line. Linebacker Jerry McLean made the stop on the play, but a good block that time outside by Benji Pryor. Boy, Tricano handles that option well. He waits until the last minute, just before he's being tackled. Then he flips it to that trailing tailback, and Rooster cut in beautifully. There was a contained by the right corner out there. He had to get inside of it. Him, but he was blocked well and Rooster just picked a proper route he's a little short of the first down they may go for it here second and two with the 17 Tricano to McMillan plows in there gets to the 10 yard line on a straight ahead dive play Mark May beat Doug Martin that time May the offensive right tackle for Pitt at 287 pounds Martin the defensive tackle for Washington 242 pounds May won the battle and McMillan got the first down at the 10 yard line and it is first and 10. The chain on the lead chain is about an inch short of the pylon, so the Panthers conceivably could make a first down. First and 10 at the Washington 10-yard line. Splitbacks behind Tricano. The give to McMillan. He plows to the five. He's at the four. He's at the three to the two-yard line. Randy McMillan hitting hard off that right side. And again, Mark May does a good job against Martin, and that's the key to the Panthers' ability to run right-handed against the Husky defense. McMillan takes care of the rest. They spot his progress to the three-yard line, so the Panthers now will have a second and a short three inside the three. Offensive line splits have been so good because they're forcing Martin in the gap now. Tricano resets the play to his backs. Two tight ends at the three-yard line. Rooster Jones plows in there, gets to the one, spinning, twisting, diving, and is tripped up as he gets to the one-yard line. Antoine Richardson made the touchdown paving tackle for the Huskies. Mike Dombrowski, good block on the play. Benji Pryor also there, the tight end, and the Panthers now are facing a third down and one at the one. All right, 134, the clock is moving down in this first quarter. Now, do you continue to go for it on fourth if necessary? Tricano just takes a timeout. Whether he's taking a timeout to get the play straight with Jackie Sherrill, we don't know. But with a fourth down, do you have to think of the possibility? Do you go for the field goal, or do you leave Washington in the hole and try for it on fourth if you don't make it on third? Let's see if that pass through forward wall. The offensive line and Russ Grimm, Dan Fiddler, Emil Boris, Mark May, and Bob Gruber with the two tight ends, Breyer, Breyer and Dombrowski. Let's see if they can get the Panthers into the end zone. This could be a big score. 129 left of the first quarter. And during this timeout, we pause for station identification on the Panthers Football Network. Play McDonald's Diamond Hunt game now. You could win up to $50,000 in cash or diamonds. Nobody can do it like McDonald's can. Your magic ticket station, 1250 WTAE Pittsburgh. Johnny Sauer with Bill Hillgrove at Husky Stadium on the campus of the University of Washington, Seattle, Washington. 129 remaining in the first half. Pitt is on the move. It is third and goal at the one-yard line. They have two opportunities. We're in the first quarter here. 129 remaining in the first quarter. We have another whole quarter to go, but it sure seems like a half has already gone to me. The Panthers break the huddle. Quarterback Rick Tricano brings them up to the line of scrimmage. Third and one at the one. Power eye to shift out of it now. Tricano takes, gives to McMillan, and he's into the end zone for the Panther touchdown. The one-yard run off the left side by Randy McMillan behind the blocking of Grimm and Fiddler, and the Panthers break the ice and are very jubilant indeed. Bill, it could be a very costly timeout, however, that Rick had to take. This happens quite often with a pit offense. They do take timeouts. Rick is proper, though. If he does not feel he got the right play call from the bench, he has to call a timeout and come out and find out what it is. But that can come up and hurt you late in the first half. 
The extra point try by senior Mark Schubert, orthodox style kicker from Springdale. Hold on the tee by Jenner. The ball is up. The kick is good. The Panthers lead it 7 to nothing, And the Panthers overcame adversity to do it. They had a field goal try of some 34 yards. The bad snap was not able to be handled by Scott Jenner, the holder. The ball went over on downs to Washington. They started out at their own 27. Two plays later, Steele had the ball apparently stolen from him by Terry White. I did not see the fumble, so I assume White just grabbed the ball out of his arms, and the Panthers were in business at the 38. And on the running of Randy McMillan and Rooster Jones took it in. Rick Tricana doing a good job of mixing things up, and Max scoring the one-yard touchdown that has the Panthers ahead 7-0. The two turn turnovers have proved very big so far. One interception, one fumble recovery, both by Pittsburgh. That has given Pittsburgh the opportunity to maintain control of the ball. Now what they have to do from this point on, defensively they have to stop that rushing attack by Washington. They have not been able to do it too well. They've received a couple of breaks and that's helped. David Trout, the junior from South Moreland, will kick off for Pitt left to right. This time he drives it down past the goal line. Anthony Allen in his own end zone decides this is going to be a beer can kick. It's non-returnable. And so Washington will start first and 10 at its own 20. We have a Panther down at the 16-yard line. We have an injured Panther player on his back. And I can't see from here. Does that appear to be Glenn Meyer? It, it is. It is the Bulldog who is down at the 16-yard line. Glenn Meyer received a knee injury in training camp at Edinburgh before the season started. Came back nicely and after uh, a game or two was ready to roll. But uh, I hope this is not the knee. He appears to have the, uh, he's just shaken up on the play. That's the way it seems to me. I think he had his bell rung, Bill. However, they are, uh, they are looking at him pretty hard in the upper frame right now. The shoulder pad, of course, can break. You know, he's a fellow that's, what, broken three headgear so far in his career. So he's a real hitter. It could be a shoulder, could have knocked it down a little bit because of, and could be a pinched nerve, anything of that nature. Panther trainer Kip Smith is out there working and administering to Glenn Meyer, the injured Panther. Panthers are home next Saturday at 1.30 against Navy. And for the younger fans, it'll also be Panther Patch Day at Pitt Stadium. That's right, for next Saturday's Pitt Navy game, the first 3,000 youth ticket buyers in the stadium will receive absolutely free a handsome cloth patch that can be sewn on shirts or jackets. It's a must for all kids who count themselves as Panther football fans. Remember, to get a Panther patch, you must be one of the first 3,000 youth ticket buyers in the stadium. And don't forget that youth tickets are only $2. They're on sale the day of the game. Pitt against Navy next week right here on the Panther Network. With Pitt leading now 7 to nothing, 127 remaining here in the first quarter, let's analyze for a moment what Washington is doing offensively. They are using the rushing game as Glenn Myers coming off under his own power. He's rushing off, telling that defense, get with it, guys. All right, Washington is splitting their offensive line. They're starting that sweep to one side or the other with a tailback feel coming in over the tackle. Then he cuts back against the pursuit. That's been their big play so far. First and 10. The Washington Huskies at their own 20-yard line. Porras, the quarterback, with the split backs behind him. And the flanker left. The give straight ahead. Off the left side is to two cent Tyler, the fullback. He's tripped up by Jerry Boyarski. He gets a couple of yards forward to the 28, possibly to the 29-yard line. They spot the football closer to the 28, that's a 23-yard line. That's a pickup of three yards. Third down and uh, second down and seven for the Huskies. We have a minute seven on the turning clock. As we approach the end of the first quarter, the Panthers lead it seven to nothing. Washington Huskies, 5-1, coming off a loss last week to Arizona State, 12-7 at Tempe. And you hear the chant, let's go Huskies. Porus, play action fake, rolls right. Dumps a little pass downfield for Tyler. He dro uh, drops the football. It's incomplete at the 33-yard line. Covering on the play is Terry White, who's had an excellent defensive game for Pitt so far. Great hit by Terry. Hit him with a roll block. Hit him right around the knees. He had to get to him. He knew he couldn't get the hand on the ball. I like the last defense, Bill, that Jackie Sherrill used. He overshifted his lineman into the gap. He put Boyarski in the gap. He brought Meisner in the gap against that big split on the Washington offense. Now they can get some penetration and cause things to happen in the backfield. Call it third and six at the 24-yard line, a long six. Washington back. Here comes the Panthers with a safety blitz. Chased out of the pocket. The quarterback, Torres, is tackled by Jeff Pelosi for a loss across the field at the 22-yard line. 
Chasing him was JoJo Heath on the safety blitz. That flushed him out of the pocket when he ran to the sideline. A diving tackle by Pelusi, and Washington will be forced to putt the football. Great speed by Pelusi, and I say that because when you have a blitz, you also have a rush from both outsides for contain. The contain on the far side was not there, and if it had, hadn't been for Pelusi, they could have made a long run. Rich Camarillo is the punter for Washington. He stands inside his own 10, gets the snap, and will kick the ball low. Coming up under it, JoJo Heat at his own 43 along the 45. Hit by one man, breaks away, still on his feet, and down he goes at the 49-yard line. JoJo Heat ran out of running room, but a good, determined effort. 22. And we have a marker down. We have a marker down along the 49-yard line, and that appears to be a clipping call against the Panthers. Let's await the call from referee John Dempsey. All Pac-10 officials here. It'll be 15 against Pitt, I believe, Bill. That, that's what the initial indication is by the referee. It is against Pitt. It's going to be 15. Could be holding or clipping. Doesn't make any difference, really. Or could be hitting below the, the waist, which you're no longer allowed to do, you know. On any return, you just can't hit below that waist. Panthers return the ball to the 49, and the clock has expired here in the first quarter. That's the end of the first quarter at Husky Stadium with a score. The Pitt Panthers 7, and the Washington Huskies nothing. This game is ending up here and continuing in this first half into the second quarter, just as was expected. A tight football game, a defensive football game, but Pitt has put seven points on the board along with Bill Hillgrove. Johnny Sauer from Husky Stadium. We're just starting the second quarter. Pittsburgh leading seven to nothing. Panthers have a first and 10 at their own 33 yard line rather than the first and 25, which uh, you might expect in that situation. But they say apparently that the clip occurred after the play had been blown dead or as it was being blown dead along the 48 yard line. So the Panthers have a first and 10 at their own 33. Panthers would have been an excellent field position. Still don't have real bad field position, but it would have been nice to start a drive near midfield. As it is, it's first and 10 pit at its own 33 to start the second quarter. Wide side of the field to the right, the Panthers moving right to left in the second quarter. Single setback, Tricano, short side option, keeps forward to the 35 to the 39 yard line. Good pickup of six yards for Rick Tricano as he took advantage of the running room. They covered the pitch man, McMillan, and so therefore Tricano decided to keep. Mike Dombrowski, good block on the play. Panthers using two tight ends. Right, Jackie Sherrill is staying with that double wing, and what he has done now, he has forced Washington out of the man-to-man -man coverage. He has forced them now to wide side zone. That's to the wide side of the field. Now what Jackie is doing is running back to the weak side away from the strength of the Washington defense. Panthers with Wayne DiBartola now as a lone setback. Second and fourth to 39 for Canada pass. The pass is blocked by Doug Martin. At the 32-yard line, Martin was all over Tricano, and he just jumped up in his face and blocked it. And so it'll be third down and four of the Panthers at their own 39. Good defensive play for one of the outstanding defensive tackles in the country, Doug Martin, 6'3", 242 pounds. He's from Fairfield, California. Now, don't be surprised because Washington is using their linebackers in the pass coverage so much that Rick might keep a tight end in the block delay McMillan and send him over the middle, he'd be wide open. On third and four, Tricano, wide side option, pitches back. Here's McMillan. He's going to be hit and tackled at the 39-yard line, no gain, and the Panthers will be forced to putt the football. Making a fine tackle on the 231-pound McMillan was strong safety Greg Grimes. That was a hard hit along the 39-yard line. Grimes is 192 pounds, but he put a good wrap on McMillan, and so the Panthers now are in punt formation. Ten men on the line of scrimmage for Washington. David Trapp awaiting the snap at his own 24. Now they have two men pull off the line of scrimmage, so they have actually right now eight men on the line of scrimmage. And Trout gets the punt away. It's low and it's wobbly. It's going to hit, take a pit bounce to the 33, to the 25, to the 20, to the 15, to the 10. Inside the 10, the Panthers push the Huskies all the way back to the five-yard line. What a punt by David Trout. It wasn't a work of art as it left his foot but it accomplished what I'm sure he was trying to do, and that's to get the pit roll. That ball must have rolled 30 yards. If you take that statistical advantage in the kicking game away from Washington, which they had going into this game, this game can be won by Pitt, especially on the turnover so far, two in Pitt's favor, and the kicking game has gone all Pitt to this point. That was a 56-yard punt by David Trout. First and 10, Washington at its own five-yard line. 
Forrest brings him out of the huddle, sets him in the eye with a flanker right to the wide side of the field. The Huskies go on the attack. To give off the left side is the steal. Joe Steele, the big tail back, gets short yardage as he comes out to the seven to the eight yard line. Where linebackers Jeff Belusi and Mark Riker drag him down just short of the nine. A pickup of just about three and a half yards, so we'll call it for statistical purposes, second down and six. The defensive scheme at this point, I think Jackie Sherrill feels that his defensive lineman can whip the offensive line of Washington, hit them, slide, let them have two or three, but not the long gainer. Panthers flop their defensive ends now, and in uh, motion is Skansky, the freshman, through the middle, nowhere to go is uh, tailback steal. He's stacked up as he gets to the 10-yard line. Call it a gain of one. It'll be third down and five. Good defensive play for tackle Bill Neal and also middle guard Jerry Boyarski. That time you had Boyarski and Neal in the gap between the right guard Shavir and Tanur, the center, and the left guard Foreman and the center Tanur. So it was really like a gap eight goal line, and those two are really pouring for Yarsky and Neal. Third down and five, Washington at its own 10-yard line. Trailing seven to nothing, 12-24 left second quarter. Rolling right, Forrest to pass. Quick pass near side, complete at the 16-yard line for a first down. Diving for it and pulling it in is that freshman, Paul Skansky, and that was a well-conceived, well-executed play for the Huskies. They'll probably measure, Bill, but it is a first down, as we see from our vantage point, 165 feet above this field and we're right on the near sideline you're looking right square down on the players as a matter of fact it's difficult to see the numbers as they stand up they have to really bend over to get the numbers well here come the chains for the measurement i think he made the first down or so it would appear from our vantage point up here and we are high as you have pointed out johnny sow it is a first down very easy to see the uh, perspective in the relationship between the chains and the progress of the ball here because you're looking straight down on it. You can get some great coaching film from up here. Yeah, it's perfect. This is where you would want to scout, Bill. You not only get depth perception, but you get the width, the angles, and where they're lining up. We can see the gaps just so well against that split offensive line of Washington. Washington trying to come out from under the shadow of their own goalpost. First and 10 at their own 16. Deep give off the left side, but plugging the hole nicely is linebacker Mark Reichard. With the football, Joe Steele looked like he was going to be able to ramble forward. He got absolutely no gain on the play. Good play for Mark Reichard, the junior linebacker from Bay Village, Ohio. Reichard, six feet tall, 210 pounds. Very fine fill because Hugh Green on the outside contain was blocked out. Meisner on the inside was blocked in. And we had to have a fill from Pelusi or Reichert, and Reichert was right into the fill on that off-tackle play. Washington, second and 10 at its own 16. They shift out of the eye and split them wide in the backfield, shift the tight end to the left side. Forrest, long count with a flanker left. Forrest, option to the left side to give straight ahead to his fullback. That's Tyler. He plows outside the 20 to the 21-yard line for about five yards. Again, Mark Reichert made the stop on the play. Tyler carrying that football on the slant left, brought it out to the 21 for a pickup of five, so we'll call it third down and five. One thing about the offensive line of Washington, the reason their rushing game is so good, they don't give up, they continue that forward momentum. Phil Foreman, the left guard, Joe Sanford, the left tackle. Panthers man-for-man -man coverage, third and five, Washington at its own 21. They send a tight end in motion. They go with the motion on the pitch back to Steele. Here comes Hugh Green, and down he goes at the 20-yard line. Hugh Green, with that quickness, forced that play. Got a hold of the shoulders of Joe Steele. A loss on the play of a yard. It'll be fourth down and six. Uh, do I hear the Boo Birds in evidence here at Husky Stadium? I think maybe that was the Pitt Golden Panthers yelling, Hugh, Hugh, Hugh. At least that's the way I'm going to call it. We got 120 of them here, 15 from Bridgeville. That contingent led by Sam Camp and also eight members of the Laurel Golden Panther group want to say hello back to Pittsburgh to Gene Lannon. Punt formation for the Huskies. Camarillo stands, await the snap at his own six-yard line. Jojo Heath is back in fifth territory, awaiting the return here at the 42. High, long, drifting punt. Jojo retreats to his 40. Back to the short side, looks for the wall, and it breaks down, and he's knocked out of bounds on the near side at the 45-yard line in front of the Panther bench. Great block by Bulldog Meyer. Boy, did he go in there and take two on the inside to try to break Jojo to this short sideline here and to finally find the wall. He couldn't find it. Knocked out of bounds at about the 45. It's going to be first and 10. Great field position once again for Pitt. And remember, Washington now has the wind if there is any. They have the advantage of it. At the beginning of this game, Pitt won the toss, elected to take the wind and kick off. So they are against the wind now in this second quarter. 
Camarillo's punt traveled 40 yards. JoJo Heath's return was five yards, so it'll be first and ten. The Panthers, relatively good field position at their own 45. They send Kenny Bowles as a flanker left, a flanker to the right side, and split end to the left of the short side is Clifford Moore. Splitbacks behind Trocano, the quarterback, and now we shift into the double wing. Lone setback McMillan. First and ten at the 45 to give to McMillan. He slips as he falls forward, gets to the 47-yard line for a couple of yards, but he went to cut back to his left, and that right foot sort of gave way on the AstroTurf. I noticed before the game, they had the Game Saver machine, the Zamboni, backing him up some water. We've had rain here the past couple of days in Seattle. As a matter of fact, yesterday, a pretty big thunderstorm that I kind of, uh, uh, judging by the reaction, uh, figured out that uh, they don't get too many thunderstorms here. The defensive tackles of Washington are split out so much with our splits. The nose guard has to do a job, and he's tough in there. That's Mays. Second and eight, fitted at tone 47, leading 7 to nothing, 9.26 second quarter. Tricano play action fake. He's back to pass. He's looking. Pumps once, pumps a second time. It's Kenny Bowles over the middle of the 35-yard line, and he's got a Panther first down. That pickup was 17 yards for a Panther first down. Bowles lined up on the right side, came straight across the middle. Tricano hit him perfectly, and the Panthers in business at the Washington 36-yard line. Tricano was smart. He pulled the string a little bit and brought Bowles back. Now that's hard to do when you have a man going down the field from a wide spot coming across the middle. He didn't go to the post, though. He brought him back in to get him out of trouble from the safety man. Panthers lead at 7 to nothing. Driving for more. Tricano. Draw play. McMillan 35, 30, 25, and down he goes. He's got a first down inside the 25-yard line at the 24. Rooster Jones threw a whale of a block to enable McMillan to run to the short side, the weak side, and ramble forward he did tackle made by Derek Harvey of safety on a trip Washington is staying in those three down linemen and as I said the offensive splits of the tackles by Pittsburgh is taking the defensive tackle so wide that they find the big hole inside and if the nose guard Mays can't cover they're in trouble first and ten pit at the Washington 24 Rooster Jones the tail back in motion to the wide side with that motion the give is to Randy McMillan he plows for a couple of yards down to the 22 and that's about all Tackle that time by middle guard Mark Giroux, who weighs 230 pounds. He's six feet two, a sophomore from Mercer Island, Washington. Russ Grimm, good blocking on the play, but the Panthers now have a second down and eight. They put both nose guards in, Giroux and Mays. That means they go to their 6-1 defense. Bowles, a flanker to the right side of the field. That's the wide side. Back split wide behind Tricano. Tricano back to pass on second and eight at the 22. Here comes the rush. He flushed out of the pocket. Runs at the 30. Directs traffic and falls down at the 28-yard line. He'll take a loss on the play of about six yards. He tried to go up, turn it upfield, but running right into the quarterback to knock him down on the play was strong side safety and linebacker Jim Pence who's 6'3 and a half, 210 pounds, a senior from Tulare, California. He made a good defensive play at the 29-yard line, a loss of seven, so the Panthers now will have a third and 15. Bowles and Cliff Moore were both out wide right, but they were continuing their deep pattern as Tricano was scrambling. If they curl up at 15 on a rollout, Tricano will find them wide open. Third and 15, the Panthers at the 29, tailback Jones in motion. Running the left, here comes the safety blitz, and Tricano's hit hard, and down he goes at the 37-yard line. And Tricano is really hit hard by outside linebacker Antoine Richardson. That was one of those lookout blocks. Richardson had a head of steam. Tricano had no chance on the play. Tricano is now going to stay in there as the Panthers have two quarterbacks in on punt formation. Marino will be in punt formation. So we'll look for the audible if it's forthcoming. If the Panthers think they can work for the first down, that's what they'll do. Tricano steps under center. Marino behind him in punt formation at the 50-yard line. Line of scrimmage, the 37-yard line. And now, a timeout indicated. The Panthers have one timeout remaining in the first half. Pitt leads at 7 to nothing. 6.48 left second quarter. There's a break in the action, and we'll be right back. If you were ever laid up, where would the money come from to pay your personal bills? Nationwide has disability income insurance plans that could help. If you're sick or injured and can't work, Nationwide will send you money every month. Not just when you're in the hospital, but when you're recovering at home. Call your local Nationwide agent for details. In Pittsburgh, Walter N. Prince on Snee Drive. In Bell Vernon, Edward K. Ramsdale on Broad Avenue. And in Verona, John J. Rendos on Salzburg Road. 
With 6.48 remaining in the first half, Rick Tricano has just taken the second time out for Pitt. Pitt is leading in this game 7 to nothing. They were going in to get another score. They were on the move pretty well, but a safety blitz got Tricano as he was rolling left, spotted a receiver downfield from his backside, the right side. A safety man came on the blitz and collared him put him down very well. He called the timeout on the fourth down situation. Now it's a trout in the punt. Anthony Magdelli, the long snapper. The freshman from Stowe Rocks out over the football. Trout awaits the snap at his own 48. It skips, but he picks it up and gets the kick away. Spirals it. It's high and short. Fair cat signal for and taken at the 11-yard line by one of the up men coming under that punt to field it for the Washington Huskies. Lance Todale. And so... The Huskies start at their own 11-yard line. The Panthers have a scoring opportunity thwarted. They had trouble handling the safety blitz, took two consecutive losses, and were forced to punt the football. 6.41 left of the second quarter. Washington first and 10 at its own 11-yard line. Again, the burden is on the Panther defense. Tom Forrest, the quarterback, lines up the freshman flanker Skansky to the left side to the wide side of the field. Panthers stunning on defense. Now they shift the tight end to the left side. Eye formation behind Forrest. Steel dot the eye. Quick pitch to Steele. No, that's a new tailback in there, and he's not going to run anywhere but back to the line of scrimmage. Kyle Stevens, in place of Steele, took that pitch back to the left. He was hit, and very quickly, by Dave Bucklew from his middle guard position, who's now in there in place of Jerry Boyarski. Watch out for Stevens. He's a barn burner. He's only 5'8", 176 pounds, but he can really turn it on. He has tremendous speed. They may be throwing to him soon, trying to get that speed on those linebackers. Another new back in at fullback is Vince Kobe. So we have a new platoon of backs in for the Huskies. They're split wide on second and 10 at their own 11. They shift into the eye. Forrest looks like he audible that time. Quick pitch to the left side. Al Stevens with the football is going to be hit by Sal Centurion and knocked down as he gets forward to about the 14, possibly the 15-yard line. That's where he'll get forward progress for four yards. It'll be third down and six. All year long, Washington has done very well on third down efficiency. In this game today, when they get in trouble on third down, they come with the rollout pass, and it seems that Forrest has been able to complete it when he needs it. You have to expect the same thing here now on third down. Forrest throwing the football to his fullback is what he has been doing. They average about 50% on their third down efficiency, third and six at their own 15. Wide side of the field to the right, and that's where Skansky is flanked. They shift into the eye. Kobe and Stevens behind Forrest. Straight back to pass Forrest. Got some time, fires over the middle, and it's intercepted by Hugh Green. He's at the 28, runs around a man at the 25, and is knocked out of bounds on the far side of the field, and the Foo Birds are out at Husky Stadium. No, that's the Hugh Birds, I'm sure. That is the Pitt Golden Panthers, 120 strong, yelling Hugh, 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 and Bill, you don't agree with it, do you? No, I do okay. not. There are not that many Golden Panthers here today. They are outnumbered, rest assured. The pass intended for Skatsky came in low. Hugh Green reached over his shoulder, pulled the ball in, put a move on the back at the 25 and got three more yards. The Panthers, after their second interception, in business first and 10 at the 22-yard line of Washington. Pit ahead seven to nothing. They give to Randy McMillan. He gets in there and is upended after short yardage of only one yard in through the middle. And I believe a, a Washington Husky player, now he's gonna get up okay. Looked like he was getting up very slowly. That was, uh, Stafford Mays, the middle guard, he made the tackle on the play along with Fletcher Jenkins, and so call it the forward progress of McMillan just one yard. It'll be second down and nine at the 21. Washington's going with that 6-1 defense, Bill, and you can't run inside on it. What you should do is either audible to a pass on the linebackers, you ought to be able to hurt them or go off tackle or wide. First slot left today shown by the Panthers. More in the slot, pitch back to the left side. McMillan cuts around the man. He's at the 20, he's at the 15, the 10, the 5. Randy McMillan into the end zone for a Panther touchdown. A run of 21 yards, and the Panthers celebrate. What a block by the Rooster, Ray Rooster Jones, the junior from Pascagoula, Mississippi. One thing you remember about Rooster Jones from last year, he's a great blocker. He always seems to be able to put them down and open the hole for his colleague, the man who is running next to him. In this case, it was Randy McMillan. Panthers will try the extra point. Randy McMillan, a touchdown run of 21 yards. The Big Mac was rambling. He got the blocking, and he took care of the rest off that left side. Got Jenner to hold on the extra point try. The Panthers leading 13 to nothing. Tack on the extra point to make it 14 to nothing. And that is a very interesting twist to an interesting football game with timeout on the field to score. Hit 14, Washington nothing. 
run, and Mark Schubert has added his second extra point. Pitt leading now 14 to nothing, and 4.30 remaining in the first half. Allen and Stevens are the return men for Washington, and they're awaiting Trout's kickoff in the end zone. He's going against the wind this time, and he's going to bring it down to the one-yard line. Taken there by Allen. He's out across the 5, 10, 15, 20. Breaks it in the open at the 30. Foot race. Here comes Trout across the field. Misses him. One more man. And the Panthers do not knock him out of bounds. He's going to go all the way for a touchdown. Wow. What and a that, great run. That has electrified the stadium. Anthony Allen, a 99-yard touchdown return on the kickoff. The crowd here has just gone bananas. He broke three tackles on the near sideline. David Trout had a shot at the 50-yard line, could not knock him out of bounds, could not catch up to make the good tackle. He was also attempted at the 35-yard line. I don't know who that was that was attempting to make the tackle at the 35, could not knock him out of bounds. Great high leg movement by Anthony Allen. A fine run down the near sideline. 99-yard touchdown run. They'll try the extra point. Mike Lansford is on. Forrest to hold. The kick is up. The kick is good. It's 14 to 7. And suddenly, after only 13 seconds, we got a brand new football game practically. The Panther lead is cut in half. Suddenly, Bill, you start to worry about this kicking game advantage that we felt and knew Washington had. Here we see it. Many people, many listeners may feel that the kicking game is only when you are doing the kicking. But that is not so. That's only half of it. The return portion is the other half. And a 95-yard touchdown run on a kickoff by Kyle Stevens early in the season. Now 99 yards by Anthony Allen. So the kicking game, once again, is becoming even. Up until this point, I felt that Pitt had the advantage in this afternoon, in this first quarter, plus some 11 minutes. 4.17 remaining in the first half, 14 to 7 now. Pittsburgh leading over the Washington Huskies. Pittsburgh ready to receive the kickoff. That's one of the longest kickoff returns against the Panthers in the school's history. I don't ever remember in my 10 years of covering this football team that happening. It was dramatic, no question about it. Anthony Allen, and did he ramble? He started up the middle, broke a couple of tackles and got through. David Trout had a shot at him at the 45-yard line of uh, the uh, Washington Huskies. He missed him. Another man had a shot at him at around the 25. He skipped out of that state inbounds miraculously and went on to score the touchdown. Allen is a freshman from Seattle, Washington. He's six feet tall, 175 pounds. Here comes Lansford kick. Sidewinder boots it deep. Take it at the Panther. Three-yard line by Barry Compton. Out across the 10. He's at the 15. Turns the corner at the 20. And is knocked out of bounds on a horse collar tackle at the 25-yard line as we pause for a station identification on the Panthers Football Network. Play McDonald's Diamond Hunt game now. You could win up to $50,000 in cash or diamonds. Nobody can do it like McDonald's can. Your magic ticket station, 1250 WTAE Pittsburgh. Barry Compton, a kickoff return of 22 yards. A 99-yard return of a kickoff by Anthony Allen for the Washington Huskies. Put them back on the board. It's 14 to 7. Pitt with the ball on the lead. Short side option for Cano Keeps. Plows forward, gets to the 30-yard line, picked up about five yards before free safety Derek Harvey put the wraps on him. Tricano going to that short side option, picked up some blocking, got the hole and fell forward. It'll bring up a second down and a long five. Pitt at the 30-yard line. Mike Dombrowski, good block on the play for Pitt. Dombrowski at tight end, the junior from Buffalo is 6'3", 215 pounds. What a kickoff return by Anthony Allen. He did it all. Showed speed, showed great control of his feet skipping out of tackles and stayed in bounds he showed balance on that too but with a second and five for Canada pass fires downfield complete on the near sideline at the 43 yard line to Clifford Moore he's knocked out of bounds by the defender Lance Todale and so the Panthers getting the ball to the 43 yard line a 13 yard gain on the pass to Clifford Moore Pitt with a first and 10 at its own 43 fine audible call that time by Tricano he saw the 6-1 defense both defensive tackles opposite the offensive guards had moved back 
He probably had a dive play to McMillan. He changed it to the pass. It's man-to-man -man coverage. Called it at the right time against that 6-1 defense. Wide side of the field is to the right. Pit first and 10 at its own 43. The give to the lone setback. Randy McMillan spins and drives forward. Gets to the 45-yard line. And that's his forward progress. Possibly to the 45 and a half. That's about all. The tackle applied by Mark Stewart. A wide, a weak side linebacker. Emil Borey is a good block on the play. McMillan using that uh, ability to spin. Gets forward for a couple of yards to the 45. It'll be second down and eight. If you're just joining us, the Panthers initially got on the scoreboard on a one-yard touchdown run by Randy McMillan. He added a 21-yarder, but then Washington came right back with a 99-yard kickoff return by Anthony Allen. 2.53 left second quarter. Pitt ahead 14-7. Second and eight. Pitt at its own 45. Cattle back to pass. Fires downfield complete to Mike Dombrowski at the 49-yard line of the Huskies. He's hit by about five Husky purple-shirted defenders, and he's knocked down. Led by Derek Harvey, who made the tackle on the play. He's short of the first down marker by about a yard and a half, depending on where they spot the football. They spot it at the 49-yard line in Washington Territory. That'll bring up a third down and two. The movements of Dombrowski showed you then. He wasn't sure. You knew he was thinking. He wasn't sure whether to get out of bounds or go for the first down. He had second thoughts, tried to go for the first. Six man in the front. Here comes McMillan on third and two, and he plows in there and gets the first down to the 46-yard line. Randy McMillan with a good hole open on the left side. Russ Grimm, Dan Fiddler, Emil Borries, Mark May, Bob Gruber, the two tight ends, Pryor and Dombrowski, are doing a good job of blocking this afternoon. I guess we have to remember that Ralph still is the guy that can really run the curl pattern to perfection, does so well, but he has a slight injury, has not played so far this afternoon. Clifford Moore is in. Clifford Moore runs a good sideline pattern, but if Chircano can roll out, he can curl very easily on a 15-yarder. First and 10 at the 45. Short side option. Chircano is hit and dropped as he comes forward to the 43-yard line. Jackie Shero all over the Pac-10 official on the near sideline. He apparently thought he saw a violation. Spearing. He thought he saw spearing by the right cornerback, Lance Todale. He thought he came in with a headgear, and Jackie came down and said, gosh, that guy's trying to put my quarterback out of here. Let's call these things. They're illegal. Second down and seven. A couple of defensive changes for the Huskies. Ball on the left side, hash mark. Pitt moving right to left in the second quarter, which has a minute 20 remaining. Pitt ahead 14 to seven with a second and seven at the 45-yard line of the Huskies. Back to pass. Kirkana rolls out of the pocket, fires downfield, and it's complete to a diving Kenny Bowles at the 30-yard line. What a catch by the senior from Rancho Cordoba, California. And has he come into his own in the last couple of ball games for a pit? Bowles is not very big. He's 5'8". That's stretching it. He weighs 152 pounds. I doubt that. He's uh, got great ability to run because he certainly has got that 4-4 speed. That time, he showed a great ability to hold on to the football. Pitt in business, first and 10 at the 30-yard line of the Huskies. Draw play, McMillan, around the block at the 30, still on his feet at the 25, breaks the tackle, he's at the 20, still on his feet and gets inside the 20 to the 18-yard line, another Panther first down. You talk about second effort. He importantly got out of bounds, Bill, with 50 seconds remaining. Pittsburgh has only one timeout remaining. That's important now on this move. They have the ball on the 18. One timeout remaining. DeBartola comes in, giving McMillan a little rest and a change of jersey. They'll stay with the same offense. It's important now. They are in field goal position. They are against the wind. The wind can affect the ball not too much on distance, but on right or left, how it may veer off. Now Tricano has taken his timeout, even though the clock had stopped with the out-of-bounds play at 50 seconds. Factors to discuss how they're going to try to score here with just 50 seconds remaining in the quarter. There's a break in the action, and we'll be right back. Football fans thrive on fast action, so here's a special tip for you. Next time you shop, hop aboard the Open Pantry Express. After all, when you're shopping for eggs, milk, bread, butter, soft drinks, and all the other important items you use each day, the only difference between the supermarket and your nearby Open Pantry is the time you save. At Open Pantry, there's no checkout line. You park right at the door, and everything's within easy reach. That's the Open Pantry Express, open till midnight, seven days a week. All aboard the Open Pantry Express, right along. With first and 10, the ball on the 18-yard line of Washington, it appears that possibly Tricano, after talking to Jackie Sherrill, is coming in. They're going to use their same offense, the same rushing offense. They may very well, Bill, go to the power eye, which they do many times to pick up yardage. 
However, they have no timeouts remaining now. So they're going to have to get the ball out of bounds or an incompleted pass in order to get enough time for the field goal. I would think Rick may now go for the pass, try to get the completion, hurry up, and then throw it away to stop the clock. Fifth first and 10 at the 18-yard line. Pitch back to the left side, showing the option pass as Rooster Jones for the end zone. It's too far for Kenny Bowles, who was running a left sideline corner pattern. He had gotten around the defender, Lance Todale, but the option pass by Rooster Jones was thrown over the end line. It'll be second and 10. The clock stops at 44 seconds. Hey, give credit to Rooster. Wasn't a bad pass. It had to come right down in the corner end of the end zone on this near side he put it right there there wasn't enough field remaining really for Kenny Bowles to be able to make the reception or get to the ball it was a fine pass though by Rooster running to his left and that's a tough play even for a quarterback second and ten Pitt at the Washington 18 yard line 44 seconds left of the quarter Tricano quick up pass complete to Rooster Jones he's knocked out of bounds on the far side of the field at the 10 yard line picks up eight yards that stops the clock at 38 seconds all right, now that's a great play there because he's got only two yards for the first. He's got third down and two. The clock stopped at 38 seconds. No timeouts remaining. Pitt leading Washington 14 to 7. Now what he can do because he's on the far hash mark, he can call a running play or a sweep to the right and make sure the man gets out of bounds, try to pick up the two for the first down. Third and two, Pitt at the Washington 10-yard line. Play action fake by Tricano. Fires for the end zone, incomplete. Crossing patterns that time for Clifford Moore and Kenny Bowles, but the defenders were back there. The ball fell incomplete, and the Panther field goal unit is on. When you cross, though, Bill, if one's going to be on the end of the end zone, one's got to be on the goal line. They were both at the intersection at the end of the end zone at the same time. Two receivers, the same spot, and boy, you can get somebody hurt meeting at that intersection. Angle from the right to the left for a field goal kicker, Mark Schubert. This will be a 26-yard attempt with Scott Jenner holding. Pit ahead by seven points, trying to make it a 10-point differential. Kick by Schubert is up. It's high, and it's good. 26-yard field goal for Mark Schubert, and the Panthers lead it 17-7 with 28 seconds left of the second quarter. Now, the Panthers special teams will have to gut it up. Uh, they've got to be a little bit disconsolate. They've got to be down just a bit mentally because on the last kickoff, they permitted Anthony Allen, a fine freshman sprinter for the Huskies, to go 99 yards for the score. Now they've got to fill the lanes and make sure they get their hats on the right numbers. That was a great wedge on that uh, touchdown run, the kickoff uh, return of 99 yards. The wedge came right up the middle. There were four men in that wedge, and Allen was smart enough to stay with it for 30 yards as far as he could up the middle, then he breaks it to the outside. When you can keep it in the middle, the longer the better, because you bring everyone in from the outside, trying to make the tackle from outside in. Then you break it to the outside and find the wall, and he outran everyone down this near sideline. Panther kick unit is now on the field. Jim Lewis, Terry White, Rooster Jones. You've got Michael Woods out there, Barry Compton. Here's the kicker, Trout, with a line drive. Taken, oh, Allen bobbled it into the end zone. They're going to try to bring it out. Here comes the other man with a football. He comes out to the 5, the 10, the 15. Kyle Stevens is not short of the 15 at the 13-yard line. We have 22 seconds left of the first half. Washington has three timeouts remaining. All right, uh, the three timeouts they're not going to use. They don't want it. They want to get out of here right now with 20 seconds, uh, 22 seconds remaining. At this time, the defense, though, should not give up. Try to get the football. Go for the ball right now, because if you go for the ball and get it, we can get another field goal. And coming into the ball game, I believe that was the backup. Uh, no, it's Porras again. They'd like to see the backup quarterback, but Porras is back in. You sure they weren't yelling for Hugh Green? No, not that time. First and 10, Washington at its own 13, trailing 17-7, 22 seconds left of the second quarter here at Husky Stadium. Back to pass, Porras. On first down, has time. Throws a long out pattern, and it's incomplete. Intended for Joe Steele at the 37-yard line. Ricky Jackson, along with Lynn Thomas, making the coverage on the play. The ball was thrown out of bounds by Porras. Good double coverage that time. Ricky Jackson going out in the flat, taking everything short, and going back with the man. Thomas playing good deep position. Don't let him get the long one. Only 16 seconds remaining. Make sure if you knock the incompletion, it's from deep to short. You don't ever, you can't go short to deep. You can't get beat. Porras in the passing department, two for six. Two intercepted. 
On second down and 10 with 15 seconds left of the quarter, he's back to pass again. Batted down, almost intercepted. Defensive play by Bill Neal, got his hands on the football, diving for it, Glenn Meyer. It's incomplete, it'll set up a third down to 10. And again, you've got the Bronx cheers out in force here at Husky Stadium. Screen pass away from the flow. Everything flowed right to the near sideline here. Forrest came this way, all of a sudden turned back, was going to hit Joe Steele, his fast halfback out in the left. But there was Neal between the quarterback and the receiver, had his hands up, almost intercepted. 11 seconds left of the second quarter. The fit defense trying to stop the Huskies here. Huskies trailing 17 to 7. Torres back to pass, running to his left. Now we got the draw play. Here comes Steele against it. He comes out across the 20 to 25. Loose football as he's tackled at the 30-yard line. And that's where he'll be down with three seconds left of the second quarter. Did you see Ricky Jackson cause that loose ball? He came in as the man was falling down. They called it dead there. But he just flicked a hand in as he went by and pulled the ball loose just with a flick of those fingers. Timeout indicated by Washington. They have two remaining, but they're not going to get a chance to call them because they have only three seconds left of the second quarter. A reminder to all Pitt football fans that the Panthers have their final two home games of the season coming up next week against Navy and then the following week against Syracuse. Plenty of good seats remain for both games, so if you haven't gotten a chance to see this Pitt ball club yet, why not take in some excellent college football with the Panthers square off against two of the top teams in the East. For more ticket information, call the Pitt ticket office at 624 Four six hundred. That's six two four four six hundred. We understand this afternoon the Navy Meds were upset by Virginia. Perhaps the Meds and Coach George Welsh might have been looking ahead to the Panthers. That's kind of unofficial, Bill. We have heard it. We have not received it from the press box. It was a seven to three score. We had it in the third quarter, but we have understood that it uh, it did end up that way. But we'll have to wait and get official word. Now they have no chance. Now there's a three man rush. We have eight men defending at this point on pit. JoJo Heath is 25 yards away from the football. He's standing back playing center field. First and 10 at its own 30 with three seconds left. Desperation try here by Poor. Steps out of the pocket, fires that long sideline pass. Downfield and it is batted into the air and incomplete at the 18-yard line. Fine coverage on the play for the Panthers. Intended to run Blacken, but Lynn Thomas and JoJo Heath back there had their eyes on the football all the way. It fell incomplete and the Panthers have a 10-point lead at halftime. That's the end of the first half here at Husky Stadium in Seattle, Washington, with a score of the Panthers 17, the Huskies 7. Set up for the far sideline. However, Allen got the ball about five yards from the near sideline. He did a smart thing. He never would have gotten all the way across field. He just came up the near sideline and had no blocking whatsoever ahead of him. New quarterback in for the Washington Huskies, bringing a positive response from the stands. A junior by the name of Tom Flick, F-L-I-C-K, from Bellevue, Washington. He's 6 2 and a half, 190 pounds, 12 of 20 passing so far this year. So he does have an arm. Washington starting first and 10 at their own 16. Split backs behind Flick, the new quarterback. Flanker right. The take and the give. Nope, Flick keeps it. Turns at the 20. Gets to the 26 to the 27-yard line. Very close to first down yardage. Mark Reichard made the stop on the play. It appears to be a Washington first down. It is. Great fake by Toussaint Tyler and also by the quarterback Flick. Toussaint Tyler came into that hole on a dive play like he had the ball. He was trying to make yardage. And Flick just kept it on the hip and cut inside the contain on the right side. Flick, the junior, lines him up in the eye now. Ball between the hash marks. First and 10 at his own 27. Looks like an audible. Center, Tom Tenuer is out over the football. Play action fake. Out pass, complete to the right side to Skansky. They block back against him. They really put the Panther defender, strong safety Carlton Williamson, down. But coming forward, Skansky is upended as he gets to the 29-yard line, so we'll call that a two-yard gain. Greg Meisner, a fine tackle for Pitt. Not only has Meisner played great football this year as a junior for the Panthers, he is also averaging in the classroom 3.5 out of a possible four in pre-med. Really a great student and a great fella on that play, Bill. Williamson was really came up to be able to be the contained man, and he made the, the receiver show in a hurry. That's what he has to do on that screen. Second and eight at the 29. Again, an audible, sending his tail back in motion. Flick straight back to pass. He looks. He's got time. Looks again. Throws the long ball downfield down the right sideline, and it is incomplete at the 27-yard line. Going for that football is Skansky, the flanker. Coverage on the play by Terry White did a good job of getting himself in a position to knock that ball away. Bill Neal put some pressure on the quarterback flick. 
and it may have caused him to release the football maybe a minute sooner than he wanted to. Terry White has just played outstanding football at the left corner all year. The only time he was beaten was against North Carolina on a beautiful corner post pattern. He learned a lesson then. He's playing the left corner spot just tremendously. Now they send Blackett out as a split end to the left side. To the short side of the field, the right, the uh, wing back is Skansky, the freshman. On third and eight at his own 29, Flick sends Skansky in motion to the left side of the field. Draw play to Steele. Steele bounces off a tackler, gets forward to the 30 to the 31-yard line, but he'll be far short of the sticks, and Washington will be forced to punt the football. Jeff Pelusi, along with Ricky Jackson, made the stop on Steele. And Rich Camarillo is in the punt for the Huskies. Line of scrimmage, the 32-yard line. That could have been very dangerous because it was against a safety blitz and a linebacker blitz. And anytime you have a draw with a blitz on, you break that rush and you find opening. Good pursuit by the defense. Most of the field is now in shadow here at Seattle, Washington. Right sunny day otherwise. Snap comes to Camarillo. Has time to get the kick away. It's a spiraling kick driving JoJo Heath back. Takes it his own 23. Comes forward, runs into traffic at the 27. He's going to be hit and dropped. And they'll call his forward progress to the 27. And so the Panthers will have it first and 10 at that point. Making the tackle downfield under that punt by Camarillo for Washington. Williams is credited with the tackle on JoJo Heat. So the Panthers start first and 10 at their own 27-yard line. Pitt leads it 17-7. Two touchdown runs by Randy McMillan. One of one yard, one of 21 yards. And a field goal by Mark Schubert. So the Panthers, first and 10 at their own 27. High formation, they shift out of it. Trekano, the quarterback. Counter play back to the right side. Rooster Jones behind a block. It's out across the 30 to the 32-yard line to the 33. That play might have gone for 10 more yards, but the man getting in there to make the tackle, Jim Penn, shed the blocking. Good block initially by Dan Fiddler made the play happen. When Rooster runs the ball, you see legs and arms flying because there's a runner that gives it 100% every time. He may only have a sliver in which to go, but he's got arms and legs flying with forward momentum. On second and four, the Panthers show a slot left with Moore in the slot. They shift out of the eye. Second and fourth, they're on 33. To the wide side of the field, McMillan is hit. He bounces back. He's hit again, and he leans forward. He'll take a loss on a play of two yards. He had nowhere to run because of the presence of linebacker Antoine Richardson, who had the arms around Big Mac. All right, now we've been using in passing situations double tight end. We're not going to go to it now. If you don't go to it, look then for Benji Pryor over the middle. He'll be covered man-to-man -man by the strong safety man, Greg Grimes. I think he can beat him on the curl pattern if he goes down about 10 and comes back to. Pryor has yet to catch a pass in this football game. Hit third and six in its own 31. To the right side, Rooster Jones behind blocking. Gets to the 35, and he'll be hit short of the 35 and knocked down, and so the Panthers will be forced to punt the football. Rooster Jones behind blocking, running to the short side, the right side of the field, gets three yards to the 34. The Panthers have a fourth and three. Jim Pett, strong side linebacker, made the tackle for the Huskies. Bill, the short side is there, and that play is there. It was just too late developing. Center Anthony Magnelli out over the football, gets the snap to David Trout. Trout gets the punt away. It's a beauty. It's high. It's long. It spirals to the 21 and taken there on a fair catch by Mark Lee. And the Huskies will start first and 10 at their own 21-yard line. That was a real fine punt for David Trout. It covered 45 yards. Two big takeaways in the first half. Terry White on both of them. A takeaway on a fumble, a takeaway on an interception. That's what the defense needs again. Get ahead in the turnover takeaway department. Take one away here and give the offense the field position. First and 10, Tom Flick, the quarterback for Washington. He's at his own 21-yard line with a flanker right to the wide side. Again, the audible. His split end moved slightly, but got back. The give off the left side is to steal. Breaks one tackle, still on his feet at the 25, and down he goes at the 30-yard line. On a nice tackle by JoJo Heath, but Steele, with that second effort, got forward for about nine yards. He's very close to the first down. Counter trap play. Everything went to the right. Shavira, the right guard, pulled left, and it was a counter play by Steele coming back left on a trap. Linebackers are the only ones that can stop that. They have to key on those pulling guards. Somebody has to come with him. Steve Fidel in at linebacker for Pitt now, along with Jeff Pelosi. Second and one at their own 30-yard line of the Huskies. Again, Flick with a long count. Eye formation. Sends his tight end in motion. 
with that motion the give goes to Steele he leans in there and apparently has the first down to the 32 yard line Jimmy Steele leaning off the right side it was designed for short yardage it got exactly that the Panthers plugged it up but not before the first down was achieved Jeff Pelosi made the tackle but Steele already had enough yardage for the first down at the 32 yard line that's where the Washington Huskies have it first and 10 they trail the Panthers 17-7 10-15 on the third quarter turning clock once again it's that rushing game ball control you have to make something happen defensively you have to get a man into the backfield First and 10, the Huskies at their own 32 with the eye formation, flick the quarterback. Fakes the draw play, fires the pass over the middle, it's complete to the tight end at the 50. He's at the 45, that is David Bale, and he's tackled as he gets to the pit 40 yard line. It was a quick pass right over the middle, running the slant pattern, the post pattern toward the middle. Bale pulled in, he's 6'4", 228, the junior tight end. Not much used by the Husky offense, but that time they used it for a good game. It covered 28 yards, and it goes to the Panther 40. Busted defensive alignment that time. Someone made an error. No center coverage. No coverage on the post. JoJo Heath, the free safety, went right to double coverage along with Thomas. And Williamson was up in the flat. First and 10, the Huskies at the pit 40-yard line. Flick, the new quarterback, has given some spark to this Husky offense. He spins and pitches back to the left side. Steal with the football. Drives forward. Still on his feet at the 35 and is knocked out of bounds in front of the Panther bench on the near side of the field at the 33-yard line. Ricky Jackson put the wraps on him, shoving him out of bounds with help from Hugh Green. At this point, Washington is the aggressor. They're far more aggressive than this Pittsburgh defense. The Pittsburgh defense must get aggressive. In the first half, they controlled the line of scrimmage. They controlled it personnel-wise. They would not allow the longer run. Now, they are not getting off first. Boyarski in the middle guard replacing Bucklew. Second and three. Washington in the pit 33-yard line. Now the cornerback on the far side, Terry White, retreats, expecting a pass. No, they come against that with a give in the middle of the fullback to Sam Tyler. He has got short yardage. They give him forward progress to the 31. That's where Bill Neal, the defensive right tackle for Pitt, put the tackle on him with help from linebacker Jeff Pelosi. The nose of the football is spotted forward into the 31-yard line. It'll be third down and about one. Tight end Lance Nybauer now coming into the game. Are they going to use a double tight end? Or, and no, they aren't because Bayer, uh, Bale went out. So now the quarterback is taking a timeout, Tom Flick. I think maybe they sent in a pass play and might possibly have tried to go for it all here in a bunch on third and two. 8.58 left of the third quarter. The Panthers lead it 17 to seven, but the Huskies are driving. They have a third and one. There's a break in the action and we'll be right back. Two tight ends, I formation. Skansky, the flanker in motion. Wide side of the right side. Against that, to the left is the pitch, and that comes to the tailback. He gets into the 30-yard line, but he appears to be short. That's Joe Steele. I don't think he made it. All right, I tell you what Flick thought. Hey, coach, if we don't make it on third and one at the 31, with this is four down territory. We'll go for it again. Let's see if they do go for it now on fourth. I think they have to. They're trailing 17 to seven, 8.35 remaining in the third quarter. Fourth and two lengths to the football. That's what the down and distance situation is for the Huskies at the 30 yard line of Pitt. Can the Panther defense hold? We'll call it fourth and a foot for all intents and purposes at the 30. Two tight ends again with a flanker to the right side, the wide side. Eye formation behind, flick the quarterback. On fourth and about a foot, the dive play is good. And they get the first down, Joe Steele diving off the right side. D. Fidel pinned him down, but not before he got enough yardage for the first down. Behind the blocking of Randy Vanderveer, the right tackle, and Dan Shavira, the right guard. The Huskies got the hole open for Steele, and they've got a first down and 10 at the Panther 29-yard line. Good explosion by the offensive line, and that's been the difference in this third quarter. That's the reason the Huskies maintain this ball control rushing offense. They're beating the defense off on the ball. First and 10, Huskies at the Panther 29. Could have had 17 to 7, but the Huskies trying to change that right now. Flick the quarterback again with an audible call. Again takes, play action fake, wanted to go the out pass. Now he throws back against it, and it's complete at the 18-yard line. What a nice play by Tom Flick. He pumped as if it were the quick out pass to the flanker Skansky, and on the pump, Skansky went straight up field. He threw behind the defender. That was Terry White with help from Carlton Williamson, and pulling it in, Skansky gets the first down at the Panther 18-yard line, and suddenly the Huskies are moving the football. That pump was effective because Jerry Boryarski had the hands up, and the pump pulled him down again. Again, then he had an opening to throw the ball and he laid it in fine 11-yard play complete to the Panther 18 they call it the 17-yard line so it's a 12-yard play 
And at the 17, it's first and 10 for the Huskies. Now they're in the sun corner of the field. Pitch back to the right side. Steele has nowhere to run, but he leans forward and gets one, possibly two yards to the 15-yard line. Terry White took the legs out from under him, and so it'll be second down and eight. Steele is so tall at six foot four, he can lean forward for two yards, and when he goes over the top in order to find the one or two yards on short yardage, he has such a great extension with six foot four, 210, he can pick up the yardage they need. 6.55 on the third quarter turning clock. Pitt ahead 17 to seven, but the Huskies are driving. They have a second at eight at the Panther 15 yard line. Black in a split to the left, black or right is Kansky. Eye formation behind, flick the quarterback. On second and eight at the 15, he takes. Pitches it back to Steele. Steele's being chased. He's got, Jojo Heath has got him, but they pass it, and it's almost intercepted by Ricky Jackson. He tried to hit a tackle, and of course the tackle's not eligible. Steele in big trouble on the safety blitz. JoJo had his arms pinned, and the incomplete pass will set up a third down and eight. Bill, if JoJo had not gotten Steele on that safety blitz, that was to be a forward pass from Steele back to the quarterback down this near sideline, and he was so wide open for a touchdown, you couldn't believe it. Now this defense is going to have to start thinking in terms of pass as well as run. When the team is running against you, you can't put them all up there to try to stop the run. Third down eight at the 15-yard line. Stevens is in a tailback replacing Steele for the Huskies. Flick sends Stevens in motion to the left side of the field. He takes, retreats to pass. Big heat, throws it over the middle. It's incomplete at the goal line, diving for the football. The intended receiver, Ron Blacken, was well covered by JoJo Heat. Ricky Jackson back there and passed. Ricky Jackson supplying heat on the play along with Hugh Green. They were in that backfield quickly, but good coverage by JoJo. And now a fourth down and eight situation presents itself for the Huskies of Washington. And that brings the soccer style kicker, Mike Lansford, onto the field. He's seven of nine this year and is one of the leading kickers in the country. In both terms of scoring and percentage. Morris is holding. The field goal try will be 32 yards. Ball is on the tee. The kick is up and the kick is wide left. The Huskies fail to score, and momentum suddenly goes back to the Panthers. 6.27 left third quarter. Pitt preserves a 10-point lead. There's a break in the action, and we'll be right back. I work barges for a living. <laughs> you might not get home for a month, so I've got to get to my money when I need it and put it away when I can, and I don't ever want to lose a penny's interest. So my money's in a Pittsburgh National Money Manager savings account. Five and a quarter percent earned and compounded every day. While I'm away, I want my money working for me back home. That's why I have a Pittsburgh National Money Manager savings account. Pittsburgh National Bank, member FDIC. With a marker down, the Panthers starting first and 10 at their own 20-yard line, and they go to their big man, Randy McMillan, off the right side. He is upended after an advance of three yards, but it appears to be a holding call against the Panthers. Holding, indeed, against Pitt. Now, Bill, this puts us in a hole. You and I talked while we were away. This team has got to get some fire in it. They go in at halftime with a 10-point lead. That's no kind of a lead at all today in football. You have to have that killer instinct to put more points on the board. You can't get conservative offensively, and you can't do it defensively. You can't rest on your laurels of the first half. You have to get the drive, the leadership, and the aggression. That'll be a half the distance penalty back inside the 10 to the 9 and a half yard line. So the Packers now will have a first down and 21 at their own nine. Packers are caught for holding. And the Packers now, with the football, have got to start moving it. Bowles will be the flanker left. Split and right is Clifford Moore. Tricano, the quarterback, takes. Retreats the pass. Has some time. Throws that long sideline pass. It's going to come in short. Kenny Bowles has it at the 43-yard line. A marker is down. Kenny Bowles with a great grab of the football. He beats the cornerback, Lance Todale. And let's see what they call on the flag down at the spot. Where right. Bowles pulled the ball in. I think it'll go as a reception, Bill, and defensive interference, but it could go the other way. But if it's defensive interference, it'll be refused. They'll take the reception, which is five yards farther downfield. The referee is now talking to Dan Fiddler, the offensive captain. He's going to say, refuse the penalty, ref. Take the play. We'd rather have it. Interference was called against Washington. Refused. First and 10 at its own 45, Pittsburgh. Kenny Bowles this afternoon has made four grabs of the football. Three of them have been spectacular. And that one with a man all over him, he pulled it in at the 45-yard line. A 36-yard advance of the football. The, Pan the Panthers have a first and 10 at their own 45. 
Tricano, the quarterback, gives off to Big Mac. He is hit hard as he slides into that line and knocked backwards. Forward progress out to the 47, but then linebacker Antoine Richardson, who's played a fine game for Washington, put the hit on Big Mac and knocked him backwards. That's the picture tackle, Bill, when they have their highlight films after the year and instructional films made. They will show that one to the linebackers. Head right into the chest of McMillan. He hit him good and high with a lot of momentum and power with 195 pounds behind it, and he set him right back on his back. Senior Ralph still did not start, is now into the football game, has been bothered by a hamstring, and still is uh, split to the left end. Now we have a short side keeper, Tricano trying to get that option play going, but the outside linebacker after the play tripped him up, and Tricano got only a half yard on the play, so the pass is now with a third and long. Rick was not expecting the blitz by Richardson that time, the linebacker. If he had keyed on him, he would have pitched early, and McMillan had an opening to the outside with Rooster ahead of him. An, in an indication that Coach Don James has made the adjustment on that short side option. So now Pitt with a third and seven at its own 48. They shift into the eye with a flanker to the right. Tricano, the quarterback, sends his tailback. Rooster Jones in motion to the wide side of the field, and that's the way Tricano rolls. He wants to pass. He looks... He throws a pass downfield, incomplete at the 40-yard line intended for Rooster Jones. He was going for the football along with Derek Harvey, the safety, and he just couldn't hold on. He dropped it, and so the Panthers with a fourth and seven near midfield will have to punt the football. David Trout comes onto the field, has averaged over 40 yards of punt in this game so far. Mark Lee is the deep man for the Huskies. We right now have eight men up on the line of scrimmage. Trout, the junior from South Moreland High School, gets the snap from Magnelli, kicks a short punt. Fair catch indicated by Lee. He'll take it at his own 23-yard line, and there's a break in the action. We'll be right back. And that's where Skansky is a flanker. Split backs behind, flick the quarterback. He's straight back to pass. He's got time. Dumps a little screen pass over the middle. It's complete to uh, Kobe, the fullback, and he is immediately tackled at the 31-yard line after an advance of three yards. He's short of the sticks. We pause for a station identification on the Panthers football network. Play McDonald's Diamond Hunt game now. You could win up to $50,000 in cash or diamonds. Nobody can do it like McDonald's can. Your magic ticket station, 1250 WTAE Pittsburgh. Panther junior Steve Fidel made the tackle on Kobe. Third down and three. Washington at its own 30. 306 left third quarter. Pitt ahead 17 7. The quarterback flick. Short pocket pass out to the right side. Complete to the flanker, Skonsky. He gets to the 35-yard line, and he appears to have the first down. He does. As the first man with a shot at him missed him, that was Carlton Williamson. Finally, Terry White pinched down on him, and the advances for five yards to the 35, and the Huskies again show the ability to move the football and convert the third down. Scantsy made a Gordon Jones move. He moved and came to the inside before he ever got the ball and eluded Williamson then, who made it, would have made the tackle for no gain. First and 10, Washington at its own 35-yard line. Wide side of the field is to the left, and that's where Skansky is a flanker. They give into the middle. Kobe with a hole out over the 40 to the 45 and down at the 46-yard line. Another first down for Washington. Steve Fidel made the tackle on the play. That time, the forward wall for the Huskies. James Davis, the right guard. Vanderveer, the right tackle, cleared the way for Kobe to run with that football. With 2.34 remaining in the third quarter, Pitt leading 17-7, to it's hard to feel that the defense is wearing out or tired, but I remember in the first half, Don James of Washington substituted a great deal, giving guys time to get their rest. First and 10, Washington at their own 46-yard line. They give off the right side. Steele tries to plow in there and gets a couple of yards to the 49. Hugh Green put the wrap on him and knocked him down after an advance of about three yards. It'll be second down and seven, 2.05 on the third quarter turning clock. The Panther lead is still 10 points. But right now, Washington, on the last two drives, has shown the ability to move the football. Boy, you can't make the hit on the line of scrimmage on these guys because they'll pick up four on you just in the forward momentum and lean. Three yards for Steele. 49-yard line in Washington territory with a second and seven. Flick again calls an audible. Eye formation, flanker left. Pitt now showing the safety blitz. Long count. Flick 
takes, retreats, passes out to the right side, complete to the tight end. Bale, Bale is knocked out of bounds at the pit 45-yard line. He's short of first down territory. It'll set up a third down in about one. Bale, the tight end, running the out pattern to the right, pulled the football in from Flick. Carlton Williamson made the immediate hit on him, but drove him out short of the sticks. He saved the first down, and so it'll be third down and a short one for the Huskies at the Panther 45-yard line. We're coming near the close of this first or third quarter, 133 remaining. It has been all Washington in this third quarter. Third and one. Washington at the pit 45-yard line. Flick is the quarterback after Porras had started. He's got the eye formation behind him. He gives the steal. Steal is hit and stacked up short of the sticks, and down he goes. It'll be fourth and about the same distance to go. Let's see where they spot his forward progress. Now they give him a little more forward progress than I thought he initially had. It's going to be inches, however, I believe. Clock winds down to 121 in the third quarter. They'll probably go for it, Bill. I just have a feeling as this third quarter's winding down, there's just 16 minutes and 21 seconds remaining in the game. They'll bring it out for the measurement. This gives Don James a chance to think on that far sideline for Washington what he wants to do, but I think they'll go for it. He's about six inches is what the official shows. Fourth and six inches is the distance to go situation. You hear the Husky fans, some 55,000 strong, barking go, go, go. The ball is placed just inside the pit 45 yard line. And on fourth down, the Huskies go for it, trailing by 10 points with a minute 21 left of the third quarter. Referee John Presley says we're ready for play. Two tight ends, flanker left and an eye behind the quarterback Tom Flick. Panthers are all bunched up near the line of scrimmage. Flick gives to his fullback, Kobe. He leans in there, apparently has the first down. Yeah, they gave it to him. Far man. He gave him more than he deserved, really, but they have it. And that's two plays in a row that I thought Washington got the break on ball placement. All right, very quickly, some scores. Alabama defeated Tennessee 27-17. Nebraska over Oklahoma State 36 to nothing. USC defeated Notre Dame 42 to 23. Ohio State 59, Wisconsin nothing. Oklahoma 38, Kansas State 6. Uh, North Carolina leading. North Carolina State at halftime, 28 to 7. And Navy defeated Virginia 17 to 10. All scores on the scoreboard with Ron Reiniger following this game. 59 seconds to go in the third quarter. First and 10, Washington at the pit 44 yard line. The quarterback is Flick. For the Huskies, he's back to pass. He's being chased. He's being hit, intercepted by Steve Fidel. He's at the 45, he's at the 40. Still on his feet, Jerry Boyarski with the football gets to the 30-yard line, and the Panthers have it. Boyarski, the big middle guard, intercepted that pass. I couldn't tell who was hanging on the neck of uh, the quarterback flick, but that's what caused the play to go as it did. It looked like a linebacker blitz to me, Bill, and I don't know who Flick was looking at. He threw the ball directly at Boyarski, who just made a reception like a tight end, and then he moved down the field, comes off carrying the ball high, now good scoring position for Pitt. Three points important, seven far better. A 24 to seven game would be far better than 20 to seven, but we'll take anything we can get on the scoreboard now. Boyarski looked like a Sherman tank, 270 pounds, rambling forward Pitt first and 10 at the Washington 30 yard line. Tricano with a single set back behind him, McMillan. Flankers to both sides, give to McMillan. Back to the left side, carries a man with him inside the 30 to the 28-yard line to the 27. Pickup of about three yards. Antoine Richardson was the man on his back. Big Mac going to the short side, the left side of the field, carried him with him. It'll be second down and seven. Jerry Boyarski, his first interception of the year. He was hurt in the North Carolina game, sprained that ankle, missed several games, and now has come back this afternoon to play fine defensive football. He picked off that pass. The Panthers got the quarterback flick with that uh, linebacker blitz, and now Pitt has the football second and seven at the 27-yard line of Washington. Long count by Tricano, again with a single setback. Short side option, McMillan, and he's going to be knocked out of bounds at the 29-yard line, a loss of two yards on the play. The Washington defense that time had it completely diagnosed, and now Washington has made the adjustment in the short side option game. The Panthers are going to have to go to the well to come up with something else. Right. Now you've got to get away from it, Bill. Now you've got to go maybe with a pass over there because the outside linebacker, Richardson, is coming in to stop the quarterback short. He cannot make any kind of coverage for you. We'll have a third down and eight. Two seconds left of the third quarter. The Panthers will lose the win if you're thinking of a Mark Schubert potential field goal here. So the Panthers now had better get a big gainer going. 
Play action fake by Tricano. Looking to the left sideline. Fires down there, and it's incomplete. The intended receiver on the far side of the field, Ralph Still, appeared to me had been out of bounds and tried to come back. Apparently, he was chucked out of bounds. That's right, and it would have been maybe illegal for him to come back to make the reception in that case. Now, Schubert, if he's going to kick a field goal here, line of scrimmage remembers the 29, will have to do it into the win because that's the end of the third quarter with the score. The Panthers 17, the Washington Huskies 7. The the field goal, Mark this will be a 43-yard field goal attempt for Mark Schubert with Scott Jenner holding angle from the left to the right. Mark Schubert, his biggest this year, 46 yards. The ball is on the tee. Schubert's kick is up. It's high. It's long. It hits the crossbar and goes over good. What a oh. field goal by Mark Schubert. Puts the Panthers ahead 20 to 7. Bill, you and I were just talking. You normally put the tee seven yards from the line of scrimmage. Schubert that time put it five and a half yards. Normally, those kind are blocked. It's not deep enough. I know he counted wrong. But good he did, because another yard would have killed him. He never would have made it. Mark Schubert, the senior from Springdale High School. What a story on Schubert. He walked on to the pit team several years ago and earned himself a scholarship, having benefited well from the tutelage of a guy named Carson Long, who he claims taught him everything he knows about the art of kicking a football from a tee in an orthodox fashion. On the season, in the field goal department, Mark Schubert, has made three, make that four of five. He has only missed one the entire year, and of course he won a football game with a 46-yarder against Temple, his longest of the season. Other than that, in the extra point department, he's 16 of 16, so he has done the job. And as we told you at the start of this broadcast, that the winner of this afternoon may be the one who comes up with all of the plays in the kicking game. Well, except for the 99-yard touchdown run and return by Anthony Allen of Washington, the Panthers have really done well in the kicking game. Bill, we are not out of the woods. Washington controlled the game in the third quarter. They can come back here. They can get two touchdowns in the fourth quarter and win this game yet. Here comes David Trout's kickoff against the wind. It'll be fielded at the five-yard line by Kyle Stevens. Out to the right side at the 15. He'll be loose at the 20. He's at the 25, the 30, and he's knocked out of bounds on a fine tackle by Michael Woods at the 37-yard line. Other than that, he might have had sideline to roam. So again, the return game of the Huskies on the kickoff is very good because they'll start with excellent field position. Pitt seems to be in position to make the tackles However, they only make hits. They do not wrap the arms. It seems like the Washington runners are breaking tackles, but they're not good fundamental picture tackles by the defense. The center, Tom Tenure, is out over the football. The quarterback, Tom Flick, his team trailing by 13 points with 14.55 left of the fourth quarter. Sends Skansky, his flanker, in motion to the wide side of the field. Play action fake. No, he gives the ball to Steele. Steele on the draw play, out across the 40 to the 45-yard line, and down he goes at that point. Hugh Green made the tackle, along with help from Jerry Boryarski. A good pickup of eight yards and a fine execution of the draw play. The quarterback flick, rolling to his left as if to pass, and then all of a sudden coming against it is that tailback with the football. Great play by the 12th man for Pitt. It happened to be the umpire that time. He didn't get out of the way. He was rolled over on his back. Steele might have made more yardage had it not been for the umpire. Steele has got to be close to 100 yards rushing for Washington. Second and two, the Huskies at their own 45. They shift into the eye with a flanker left. Flick the quarterback takes. Gives to his uh, tailback again with a first down run. He's out across the 50 into the pit 46 to the 45-yard line. A 10-yard gain for Jimmy Steele, who came in with a fine set of statistics. The tackle that time made by Hugh Green. Let me tell you how Steele runs. He's six foot four, 210. He tries to stay low. He runs under great control in the beginning. He allows his offensive guard, Dan Shavere, and his tackle, Randy Vandeveer, to go ahead and make the block, and then he turns on a little more speed. You can see why Steele averages almost five yards a carry. First and ten, Washington with the ball at the pit 45-yard line. Flick. Again, the sprint draw play to Steele. This time he's going to be hit after an advance of only one, possibly two yards. A good tackle by linebacker Mark Reichert with help from Sal Sonseri. Sonseri is a sophomore from Central Catholic High School, six feet tall, 213 pounds. Pitt is cutting off the hole where they would like to run. They'd like to run off tackle, but Steele all day has been cutting back the opposite way against the pursuit. That time the pursuit was a little slower and helped. 
Let's see what Flick does on second and nine at his own 44. Rolls left. Fires a pass downfield. Too tall for the intended receiver, Skansky. It goes out of bounds at the 30-yard line. The trouble was Skansky was at the 35. Lynn Thomas providing coverage on the play for the Panthers' secondary. A surprising secondary indeed this year. It was considered possibly a question mark for a pit, but uh, they have responded. In the past four games, pit opponents have averaged only seven completions a game against the secondary, an average of only four first down a, day, a game in the air. So, the Huskies now have a third down and nine at the pit 46-yard line. Back to pass. Flick has time. Fires over the middle. And is complete to Blacken. Diving at the 32-yard line. He's got a first down. Nice play on the comeback over the middle. Blacken, his first reception of the afternoon, picks the ball up and is nailed as he comes in, diving for the football at the 33-yard line. Quarterback had too much time. The rush is all coming from the outside. A three-man rush that time. It came from the outside. The rushers were too wide on it. Flick just stayed in the pocket and had all the time in the world to allow the receiver to clear the linebackers. Flick now is 7 for 10 in the passing department. He has done a good job. First and 10, the Huskies at the pit 33 with 12.44 left of the football game. The give. Off the left side, nowhere to go is Kobe, the fullback. He is hit immediately by Bill Neal, the Panthers' junior defensive tackle, and the advance of the football is forward to the 30-yard line. It'll be second down and seven. Neal made the hit right on the line of scrimmage, but boy, these Washington runners run with that forward lead. You can make the hit on the line, but they're going to carry you for three. Kobe, not really that big. He's 195 pounds, not big compared to Tyler, who's 213, or Steele, who's 210. Down on second and seven, Washington with the football at the pit 30-yard line. The burden on the Panther defense. Got a flanker to the right side. He's out of the line. Play action fake. Flick is running to his left. He's got time firing downfield. That it is caught at the 10-yard line. Pulling that football in is Blacken. And the Huskies have a first and 10 at the 9-yard line. First and goal at the 9. Jojo Heath was on his back, but Blacken pulled the football in. Jojo just did not have the speed to stay with Blacken that time. Blacken was coming from the near side all the way across. And because he had a good head of steam, Jojo started a little late to go with him and couldn't catch up with him. You cannot allow Washington to get seven here. You want more than a six-point spread in this game. First and goal, Washington at the pit nine-yard line. The wide side of the field is to the right. Flick the quarterback with a long count. Back split behind him. The give is to Kobe, the fullback. He gets to the line of scrimmage, and that is all. Dave Bucklew, the middle guard, whipped the block of the center, Tom Tenure, and got in there and made the play. They spot his forward progress to the eight-yard line. It'll be second down and goal. If you had to give him a first down, you hoped it was around the nine or ten because first and goal on the nine or ten is most difficult. It gets difficult down there in passing. You don't have enough room. It gets tough against the run because the defense bunches on you. Now, Flick looking to the bench is confused, and he'll have to take his second time out. And that could cost the Huskies a lot, well, a lot in the way of momentum as we get further down the line in this football game, and we have plenty of time left. Pitt ahead 20 to 7, and that was a great timeout for the Pitt defense. Cheryl liked it, I'm sure. Second and goal at the 8-yard line. Flick of 8 is, is 8 of 12 passing. He's got eye formation behind him on second and goal at the 8. He sends his... Blacker in motion. Pitch back toward the motion to the tailback. With the football, Stevens gets to the five, the four, the three, the two, and he is knocked down. Steele is knocked down short of the goal line. Joe Steele took that pitch back to the right side, and now it'll be third down and goal. for the Huskies at the two-yard line. Boy, student body right. Everybody went with it. Even Randy Vanderveer, the right tackle. The right offensive guard, Shavir, was out there. The left guard, Foreman, was leading. They had everybody in front of it. They cut down the contain man real well, and they had the opening to the outside. The crowd has become boisterous. Third and goal at the fifth two-yard line for the Huskies, trailing by 13 points. High formation behind Flick, the quarterback. The give into the middle. Steele leans into the one-yard line. He's short of the goal line, and now we'll have a big fourth down play. I think that Don James of Washington will have to go for it. He knows he's trailing by 13 points. He needs the seven right here. He's not going to go for three. And Steele, at six foot four, 210, is the man to look for. He goes over the pile well. Pelusi, the linebacker, or Riker, the linebacker, will have to key on him and try to hit him in midair with as much momentum going the opposite way. Fourth and goal and a short one to go. Flick the quarterback with the eye backs behind him. Looks left and right as he counts cadence.
He takes. He gives it to the middle and over the pile for the touchdown. It's Joe Steele. And the Huskies make it an interesting ball game with 10 minutes and 4 seconds remaining. It's 20 to 13. The Huskies right now will go for the extra point and then be in a position to come back and only have to score seven to win the contest. And the Monkeys on the Panthers back right now. Bill, no doubt about it, for 19 minutes and 56 seconds, it has all been this second half. The University of Washington, basically the rushing game, basically Joe Steele, probably over 100 yards by now. Lansford to try the extra point with Forrest holding. The ball is on the tee. The kick is up and good. And now it's 20 to 14. That Panther lead is down to six points with 10.04 remaining. The Panthers the ball over to the Huskies at the 37-yard line following a fine kickoff return where the man with the football, Stevens, came out from his own five to the 37, and then they marched downfield. Joe Steele providing the bulk of the running, but two big pass receptions by Ron Blacken, a junior split end, 5'10", 188 pounds, from Lake Stevens, Washington. He pulled in an 11-yard gain for a first down at the 33-yard line in Pitt territory, and then, with his big 21-yarder on the sideline, set up Washington first and goal at the nine, and they took it in four plays later. No doubt Jackie Sherrill is saying to his team, we are allowing the opponent to dictate to us we have to hold the football offensively. We have to move it. We can't be conservative. We can't hold on to just a six-point lead. We've got to go in for the score. Kickoff man is Mike Lansford. After deep end at the goal line as the kick is high. Coming in at the three-yard line to JoJo Heath. He's out across the five, the 10, the 15. Spins and hit and knocked down at the 20-yard line. And that's where the Panthers will have it first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Derek Harvey made the stop. He's a normal free safety, but under the uh, kickoff by Lansford, he came downfield and put the wrap on JoJo. So the Panthers now will face not only a fired-up Husky team, but a fired-up crowd as well. You can hear this crowd of some 55,000. They were quiet during the first half when the Panthers dominated to take a 17-7 lead, but in the second half, it's been mostly the Huskies. Tricano, the quarterback, McMillan, the fullback, and Rooster Jones, the tailback. And now, Tricano says we can't hear the signal, so he goes to referee John Presley. Presley says, all right, go ahead, rehuddle and regroup. And, of course, that even further inflames the crowd. Have you ever seen a five-yard penalty against the home team? I don't think I ever have, but that's the rule. They give them two or three opportunities. Then the captains always have to look up to the crowd and say, hey, slow it down a little bit because the official can penalize the crowd five yards, the home team. Pitt first and 10 at its own 20-yard line. The flanker to the right is Kenny Bowl. The split end left is Ralph Still. Now they shift out of the eye. The give. Off the left, right side. As Randy McMillan, he gets a couple of yards to the 23, and that's about all. Did not have much running room, thanks to the presence of Doug Martin, the fine defensive tackle for the Washington Huskies. In the first half, Mark May did an excellent job on Martin, and let's hope that he doesn't become a factor right now. Washington is staying with that 6-1 defense, Bill, with two nose guards, but they're playing on the offensive guards, Mark Giroux and Stafford Mays. So that 6-1 is there, tough to run inside on it. You almost have to go outside or throw the ball. Artrell Hawkins in a tailback for Pitt, and again, Tricano looks to referee John Presley and said, we can't hear, we've got to go back to the huddle. So Presley said, fine. Now let's see if there are any warnings issued here to the crowd as to uh, the responsibility for the home team to keep them quiet enough for the visitors to get a play underway. Jackie Sherrill is telling the field judge that's the second time you stopped them. Now they get one more shot, and that's going to be it. And he's telling them that right now. Now the important thing, on 6-1 defense, Washington doesn't think Pitt will throw the ball. I think they've got to come out here and get aggressive offensively and throw the ball. Pitt second and seven in its own 23, leading by six points. Quick pitch to the left side. Artrell Hawkins with a football. Dives in there, gets maybe one yard. That's about all, possibly two. And with that football, it was uh, Rooster Jones coming off the left side. Jones had gone out for one play because of a tearaway that had been torn. Now he's back in there, and he carried out to the 25. That is a gain of two yards. It's third down and five. And the Panthers, with 9.06 remaining, have Julius Dawkins in as a split end. Dawkins, a fine freshman from Anesson High School, will come in and line up to the short side of the field, the left side. Kenny Bowles goes out as a flanker to the right. Look for the possibility of a screen pass that can be safe and maybe pick up the four or five yards. Turcano now wants another timeout. Now, here comes Jackie. Jackie's telling them, the officials, 
He's saying, now look, how many times are we going to let him have it? He's also, I think, telling Rick Tricano that it's third and five, or he's telling the official, we want five-yard penalty right now. Jackie Sherrill holding up five fingers, and he's out on the field saying, hey, that's five-yard penalty. I'm sure that's what he's saying. And now he's going to talk to the field judge and uh, just get an interpretation from referee John Presley, who is the man responsible for making out a judgment as to whether there'll be a penalty for the crowd being too loud. Third and five, fit at its own 25. Wide side of the field to the right. Tricana rolls that way. Looks downfield for the pass. Firing for Kenny Bowles, and it's incomplete. It's the 45-yard line. It skips in low, and the Panthers will have to punt. And he wide open. He was so wide open on that far side, Ricky threw it short. He thought maybe he'd come back for it, but really, Kenny Bowles didn't have to. He had the man beaten by four yards on the far sideline. Mark Lee is the ever-dangerous punt return man for the Huskies. He stands and awaits this David Trout punt at his own 40. The line of scrimmage is the 25-yard line, and Trout awaits the snap from Anthony Magdelli at his own 10. Gets the snap. Not much of a rush. Gets the punt away. It's going to be short. It's going to hit in pit territory and take a Washington bounce and go out of bounds at the pit 45. And that's where the Huskies are in business, trailing by six with 8.37 remaining. The Panthers earlier had opened up a 14-0 lead. Then, with dramatic suddenness, a 99-yard kickoff return by Anthony Allen made it 14-7. The Panthers kicked a field goal and went into the half, leading 17-7. That's the way it was until the fourth quarter. Schubert, another 43-yarder, hitting the crossbar, going over to make it 20-7. But then Washington marched up the field for the score and now have it in excellent field position, first and 10 at the pit 45. The burden is on the Panther defense once again. Flick is the quarterback. Steele is that ever-dangerous tailback, and Kobe is the fullback. Flick, the junior, pitches back to Steele. Steele looking for running room, breaks a tackle, gets in across the 45, a couple of yards to the 43-yard line, where he's met by Carlton Williamson of the Panthers. Fits four deep secondary. Heath is the free safety. The strong safety is Williamson. The cornerbacks to the left, White, to the right, Lynn Thomas. An advance of two yards, second down and eight. Washington at the pit 43-yard line. Now Kyle Stevens comes in as a tailback to give Steele a rest for the Huskies. Flick lines him up in the eye and sends Gancy as his flanker left the ball on the right hash mark. Black in a split to the right side, the short side of the field. Flick on second and eight at the pit 43 with 7.57 left of the game. Takes loose football. And the Panthers have recovered oh. at the 46-yard line. On that football is JoJo Heath on the safety blitz. Amazing. Safety blitz that came right over the center. There was a mix-up on exchange. I've said so many times, put a man on the center's nose on a crucial play, and sometimes he gets a little excited. He didn't get the ball all the way up. JoJo, he took the ball in the air. It didn't hit the ground. He could have run the ball had he not been tackled. That's five turnovers for the Huskies. And now the Panthers have the football back. They have a break. Can they take advantage? Tricano said the crowd is too loud. I've got to stop them down again. Referee John Presley says you're absolutely right. Bill, you have got to come out here and use the same game plan you used in the beginning. Now, we haven't shown the double tight end in this half, as I recall. That was the gimmick in the first half. It had a great effect on the Washington defense. Now, the Washington defense has taken care of, at halftime, the counter option play to the weak side. They handle it well. But if they do handle it with strength to the weak side, then they have opened up the strong side in some manner. First and 10, the Panthers at the 46-yard line. Referee Presley says to Tricano, this time you can't, now you can. This is an interesting crescendo of sound here. Slight reaction, so Tricano doesn't get the call. Presley says, play football. Then the reaction to that, and now we have a PA system warning. And now the burden is on the crowd to quiet up and let the Panthers get the play underway. Yeah, the field judge has told Jackie, Jackie, it has to happen three times in succession on the same down. It can't happen one down once and then one down the next down. Now it has happened two times here. If it happens the third, it would be five yards. Center Russ Grimm out over the football. The Panthers split backs behind Tricano, first and 10 at their own 46, following the fumble recovery by Heath. Now to the wide side. Here comes Rooster Jones. He gets a couple of yards out to the 49-yard line, and he's hit and sandwiched on a tackle by linebacker Antoine Richardson, who's enjoyed a fine game for the Husky defense. Call the line of scrimmage. The 40, well, we'll call it the 48-yard line, so that'll be a two-yard advance. Second down and eight for the Panthers at their own 48-yard line. 
Great call. They faked the option to the short side of the field, went back with a counter. Next time, though, Rooster will turn it downfield. He tried to get to the outside. He had room inside, though. Rooster Jones and Wayne DiBartola are the backs behind Tricano. Again, Jones to the wide side of the field. He gets around one man, but he's got to go down for a loss on the play back at the 43. Again, Antoine Richardson pursuing, made the tackle for the Huskies. And Jones had nowhere to run. Richardson cut down his angle to the sideline. We pause for station identification on the Panthers Football Network. Now, news on the hour and air alert traffic reports. Full service on the AM dial on 1250 WTAE Pittsburgh. After a five-yard loss, trying to run to the left side, the Panthers now have a third and 13. They have a six-point lead, 6.40 on a turning clock. Washington with one timeout remaining. It's been a gambling Husky defense, Bill. If you go against the gamble, you're going to beat them. Tricano takes. Fakes to Artrell Hawkins. He's going to pass. Fires downfield. Complete to Benji Pryor. Still on his feet at the 40. Out of bounds. He's got a first down. Pryor's first pass reception of the football game. It couldn't have been a bigger one. All right. The best thing then, it was a rollout opposite the flow of the backfield. Washington is going with the flow of the backfield. They're coming across with good penetration that way. But that time, Tricano faked the flow to the right, bootleg to the left. Benji Pryor came from the right side all the way across field, 10 yards. He was wide open on the play. A great play call. I love it. 16-yard gain to Benji Pryor on the pass from Tricano. First and 10 pit at the Washington 41. Wide side of the field is to the right. Now we have the pitch back. Artrell Hawkins needs a block. He's tripped up and he hits the 40 and is down at the 39-yard line. The blocker coming from the far side of the field in toward the middle was the flanker that time, Kenny Bowles. And our trail, I think, just got kind of caught up in that block. And as a result, what could have been about a seven or eight yard gain is only a gain of one or two. They came in and blocked on the strong safety who was Grimes, but he was double teamed because coming from the inside out was Benji Pryor. Pryor hit high, Bowles hit low from the outside. They really sandwiched him, and our trail was looking for the hole. So the Panthers have, here comes the give to Artrell Hawkins, he gets in there for a couple of yards to the 36-yard line forward progress, is driven back by Jerry McLean on the tackle, but the forward progress is for four yards. That'll set up a third down and five. Pitt at the 36-yard line of the Huskies. Artrell Hawkins, a pretty good pickup of a couple of yards. Washington down linemen don't make many tackles, but they keep offensive blockers off of those backers. The linebackers, Harrell, McLean, they do a great job in moving to the tackle. They make the most tackles of anybody on this team, and they should. Timeout now by Rick Tricano. There's a break in the action, and we'll be right back. If friends are coming over this weekend to play cards or just for a get-together, remember Open Pantry. There's everything you need for weekend entertaining. Soft drinks, drink mixes, and ice. Even greeting cards and party decorations for those last-minute oops, I forgot, birthdays and anniversaries. Open Pantry has it all. Shop Open Pantry for all of your last-minute shopping needs. The Open Pantry Express is the fastest shopping trip in town. Open every day till midnight. All for the Open Pantry Express, right along. Well, I think the answer now with 5 minutes, 14 seconds remaining in this game, a third down and five, pit in control on the Washington 36-yard line. 5-14 remaining in the game, pit leading 20-14. to 14. They have to get points on the scoreboard. Rick Tricano has just called a timeout. He's come again to talk to Jackie Sherrill to the sideline. What do we do here, Coach? Do we throw for it? We're not going to make it running, I don't believe. They cannot put this one in their pocket yet. Washington has time remaining, but they only have one timeout left. Pitt has two timeouts left. This is very important. After the injury, Kenny Bowles is back in as a flanker to the left side, the wide side of the field, third down and five. Pitt at the 36-yard line of the Huskies. Leading very badly at first down here, split backs behind Tricano. DiBartolo the fullback. Tricano. After a long count, a straight back to pass. Short pocket pass over the middle, almost intercepted, dropped at the 31-yard line. The man who almost pulled that pass off and intercepted was Derek Harvey, but he dropped it. It was intended for the Panthers wide out to that side of the field, and that was uh, the flanker, Kenny Bowles. Jerry McLean, good pressure on Tricano, firing in there on the safety blitz, and now the Panthers are in punt formation. Dan Marino is the punter. He awaits the snap at midfield. The line of scrimmage now is the 36-yard line of the Huskies. Marino, the freshman, 
Gets the drop, gets the punt, kicks it away. It's going to go hit at the 10-yard line. It's going to take a pit bounce and be down inside the 10. It's going to go out of bounds at the 6-yard line. What a play by Dan Marino. A punt with that good drop. He kicked it vertically, the point down. It came down and hit around the 10 and then took an immediate pit bounce toward the sideline inside the 10 in the coffin corner out at the 6. And the Huskies are 94 yards away from pay dirt, And they have 5 minutes and 2 seconds and only one timeout remaining. Marino punted from the far hash mark. The ball went away from the safety who was playing on the far hash mark all the way left. It hit on the left hash mark and started right directly to the out-of-bounds line at 6 yards. First and ten, Washington at their own six-yard line. Trailing by six points with 5.02 left of the ball game. Flick the quarterback takes. Loose football. The Panthers recover at the two-yard line. The Panthers have the football. Greg Meisner recovered. The ball came loose on the exchange. Johnny Sauer with the back bump into him. I couldn't tell, but the surge by the Panther defense, Bill Neal, uh, Jerry Boryarski, Dave Bucklew, Greg Meisner, and suddenly the ball came into pit hands, and the Panthers have the ball first and goal at the Washington two-yard line. There has not been a bigger defensive play for Pitt this entire season. It was kind of a gap eight formation defensively, and they hit and penetrated the gap. I think once again the center had difficulty, and the quarterback Flick, who's the second team quarterback to Porras, moved out too quickly and he got jammed on the play. First and goal at the two yard line, Trucano the quarterback. Swings and shifts his backs around. The give off the left side is to Artrell Hawkins. He gets only to the one and is stacked up there by a host of purple shirted defenders for the Huskies. He tried the left side behind the blocking of Grimm, Fiddler, and Gruber, but because of the defensive surge that time, got only one. But now the Panthers have a second and goal at the one and back into the football game after uh, uh, an absence that I really can't explain. Apparently, he was shaken up on an earlier play as Randy McMillan. I think, importantly, the referee allowed the clock to continue to roll while they were unpiling. At this point, you teach your team, if you're ahead, to unpile slowly, let the clock run. All right. Here's the give to the deep man. Artrell Hawkins plows in for the Panther touchdown. And the Panthers at 417 have scored a big, big touchdown. Three turnovers on the day, Bill, that really have meant everything. Terry White on the fumble recovery and the pass interception in the first half actually gave Pittsburgh the 17 to 7 lead at halftime. And here, one of the biggest turnovers that Pitt has gotten this year, the takeaway at the two-yard line, is going to really put this one out of reach. Schubert to try the extra point, and now the Panthers have to call a timeout. Scott Jenner looked at the alignment, and now the Panthers have called their second timeout of this half, and now we'll only have one remaining in the remaining 417. Ten men on the field, Bill. We didn't have 11 men on the protection for the kick. So the Panthers have to save the penalty. There's a break in the action here in the fourth quarter, and we'll be right back. When you say but, you say a lot of things nobody else can say. There is no other one. There's only something left because the king. St. Louis. 4-17 remaining in this football game. Pittsburgh leading 26-14. The point after attempt. Instead of the one-point attempt now, Pittsburgh deciding to go for the two. 26-14. That's a 12-point difference. The uh, 13 points wouldn't make much difference, but another 14 would. So two points. An important play, a good call. Trocano on the two-point conversion try. With a flanker right, back split behind him. Rolls to the right side. The wide side fires for the end zone. Incomplete. It was batted by a purple-shirted Washington defender. Jerry McLean got the football. The pass was intended in the end zone for Kenny Bowles, the flanker. And the Panthers fail on the two-point try. They lead 26-14 to 14 with 4-17 remaining. Don't go away. We're going right to the wire. I think Ricky Turcano was a little worried about lofting the ball. His receiver had McLean beaten. He would have had to loft the ball, and the outside was taken away. No one was on the outside, no corner back. But Ricky tried to drive it in, got it a little low. It was hit by McLean, who made a nice play. It was a leaping play. Panther kick return and coverage unit 
That's their kick coverage unit is going to have to work very hard now because the guy, Allen, is going to be back there deep. And earlier, he returned 199 yards for a touchdown. He's back there along with uh, Kyle Stevens. Allen to the left, Stevens to the right. Trout will be kicking right to left. 4-17 remaining. Pitt ahead 26-14 after having failed on a two-point conversion try. David Trout, the soccer-style kicker from Southmoreland. Onside kick is picked up immediately and down by Washington at the 45-yard line. With the football on one bounce is Tom Tenure, normally a center. And I don't know whether Trout just absolutely missed that ball or whether he was really trying to hit the skid kick. Bill, yeah, let's not give the misimpression. It was not an onside kick. He wanted to hit the squibber, but he hit it right to a man in the front line who made an unbelievable catch. If it had gotten by, it would have squibbed on downfield. They did not want the long return. They didn't want the effect, though, of an onside kick, and that's really the effect that it had. Well, they've got the football at the 45-yard line in Washington Territory, and Flick puts them underway with split backs on first and 10 at his own 45, trailing by 12 points, 4.15 remaining. Long count. Flick back to pass. Here comes Hugh Green. He hits him, but he completes the pass to Steele. Steele to the 50. Still on his feet. Breaks the tackle. He's at the pit 45. Has a first down to the pit 43-yard line. Flick got hit by Hugh Green just as he delivered the football. Ricky Jackson finally made the tackle, but credit Steele with good second effort running with the football. Jojo Heath gets out from under that pile. Steele broke out of Pelusi, Boyarski, and Meisner. They all three were there and hit him, and he broke all three of them. Pass covered, 12 yards, and a first down for the Huskies in pit territory at the 43-yard line. Clock winds down to 351. Flick sends his tail back in motion to the left side. He rolls out that way, now steps back in the pocket, fires downfield, it's complete at the 33-yard line. First down to Blacken. Blacken inside the 30, gets to the 27-yard line, tackled there by Carlton Williamson. A pit defender got his hand on the football, but Flick had enough on it to get it home anyhow. Each team, one timeout remaining. The defense is playing very defensively. That is, the secondary is so deep on the field, there's plenty of room to complete the 15 and 20-yarder in front of them. You may at this point have to start playing a little tighter. Don't play too much defense on defense. You can't lose your aggressiveness. 15-yard gain has Washington with a first and 10 at the pit 28-yard line. Trailing 26 to 14 with 319 left. Flick, the junior quarterback, takes and retreats the pass. Here comes the corner fire. Oh, down he goes. He was hit hard on the corner fire by Lynn Thomas. The junior from Pascagoula, Mississippi, came from the right side and was coming on the blind side. Flick had no chance. The loss is back to the 39, 11-yard loss. Now it'll be a second down and 21. That's the big, important defensive play where you have to make something happen. The, con the top clock continues at 2.50 and going down. Washington has only to one timeout remaining. Pitt has one. You have to hold them out of that end zone here. Second and 21. Back to pass. Flick. He's got all day. He's going to run with the football. He turns at the 40, and he's upended as he hits the 38. A marker is down at that point. I hope it isn't a face mask. Looks I like wonder if it might be a clip. Yeah, that's what it looked like to me, Bill. A man came back. It looked like it was a clip. We'll have to wait and see. That stops the clock, of course. However, after the penalty, the referee is supposed to wind the clock again. Now, Jackie Sherrill has said, let's take the penalty on the clip, move him back 15, but more importantly, with the clock stopped at 2.31, I want to make sure that that referee starts the clock 10 seconds after he spots the ball. Sherrill communicating effectively with the official on the near side of the field now is pulled by the arm by secondary coach Ron Dickerson. Says, come on, coach, you got to cool down. Now, what Sherrill wanted there, I don't know. But we're going to get a clipping call, and it's going to go against the Huskies, who trail 26 to 14. They trail by 12 points, 2.31 remaining. The Huskies have one timeout left. Clipping is the call against the Huskies. Marches the ball back inside Washington territory at the 47-yard line. The clock turns. 2.27. It's second and 35. Washington with a football at its own 47-yard line. Flick back to pass. Throw on the long sideline pattern downfield, and it is incomplete. Overthrown by three yards. The intended receiver is the freshman flanker, Phil Skansky. Good coverage down there by the cornerback, Lynn Thomas, playing center field effectively, JoJo Heath. And the pass came in too tall. Flick's got some arm. Now, you saw what JoJo did then. He had plenty of depth to begin with. 
which cuts down his move to the sideline then in order to get to where the ball is coming down. He gave good inside help to the cornerback who was Lynn Thomas, who has been in good position all day. Third down, 35 to go. The ball on the Washington 47. Slot left this time for the Huskies. The Panthers uh, send their defense a little bit out that way, and now they send motion that way with a tailback steal. Back to pass is Flick on third and 35. Fires downfield, and it's too tall incomplete. The intended receiver blocking at the 43-yard line of fit was covered by Carlton Williamson, and now it'll be fourth down and 35. The clock is stopped with the incomplete pass at 2.07. All right, with a third and 35, Bill, that pass would have only made 10 yards because he was well covered at least three white jerseys around him so he wouldn't have made much it still would have brought up the fourth down and a long 20 yards to go so it wouldn't have been a bad completion now the same thing has to occur here but the defense has to say to itself knock the ball down don't intercept it fourth and 35 Washington at the Washington 47 trailing 26 to 14 with 207 left Steal again. The tail back in motion to the left side, the wide side. Flick is back to pass on fourth down. Steps out of the pocket, comes forward, fires downfield. It's complete, but it's going to be far short of the sticks, and the Panthers take over on downs at their own 38-yard line. The pass was complete to Blacken, covering on the play with Steve Fidel. When he smothered Blacken, the ball was down. The Panther defense that time playing to prevent the way it should be played. Give him the completion. Don't let him get the first down. And more important, Flick started to roll to his right. He had some running room, but the linebackers did not take the fake of the run they stayed back the best thing that can happen on a fourth and 35 is let the quarterback run the ball you don't care but so many times if you're not properly drilled as a linebacker you'll take the run fake leave your coverage come up and try to stop the run but Pitt didn't do it that time 158 remaining the Panthers close now to a big big victory if they can pull it off they give off the right side. Wayne D. Bartola breaks tackles. He's in the clear at the 45, and he's down at the 42-yard line. A big first down in Washington territory. Wayne D. Bartola behind the blocking of Emil Boris and Mark May off the right side got through there. Finally was dragged down by outside linebacker Jim Pence, but the Panthers have the first down with a minute 52 remaining at the Washington 44-yard line. Now Pitt is rushing against the defeated team. Washington is not going to give them a whole lot of aggression or penetration. The split is still there with the offensive lineman. The normal running lane has been widened, and Pitt has taken advantage of it. Wayne D. Bartola, the junior from Baldwin High School, an 18-yard gain, his longest of his career. First and 10 at the Washington 44, the give off the left side. D. Bartola once again is hit and hammered after a short gain and is knocked down. The Panthers in the backfield are not going with Randy McMillan, so I must suspect that he's been injured some way because Di Bartola has played, I'd say, in this fourth quarter more than uh, McMillan has played. Well, I think maybe Randy ran an awful lot in that first half, Bill. He really controlled the rushing offense for Pitt. And I think also, if you recall, on short yardage situation, when we're going for the tough yardage, it's the power eye, and Di Bartola is a very sure ball carrier. Washington has yet to use its timeout. Each team has one remaining. The clock winds down to 50 seconds left after the game. Pitt with a quick pitch back to the right side, but we have markers flying, and that'll be a delay of game penalty against the Panthers. It stops the clock with 48 seconds remaining. This crowd now is pretty well thinned out. A lot of these people uh, attend this game by boats. They park their uh, boats on the dock here uh, on the campus on Lake Union to our right, and uh, we see a couple of the boats now leaving the stadium area, and much of the crowd of 55,000 has thinned out having watched the Huskies suffer their second loss in a row, and uh, certainly they are disappointed. But let's turn it the other way and say that the Panthers with a victory, which will be their fifth of the year, it's a big one in terms of certainly uh, money for the institution because of bowl money and perhaps television money down the line. I'm glad that Navy won today because there's a possibility the Panthers can be on uh, television next week against Navy. Pitt leading 26-14, 48 seconds remaining. They have a second and 14. The give to Di Bartola plows into the 45-yard line of the Huskies. He's hit by Jerry McLean, and that will keep the clock winding down to 45 seconds, and that's where Washington calls its final timeout. 45 seconds left. The Huskies now have to have the Panthers completely come undone in order to try to come back and win this football game. 
The assistant coaches up here in the booth next to us, Bill, were raising a little cane then, and I don't blame them because the clock was very late in starting. That play only took three seconds, and it should have been at least six or seven. I want to talk about the delay of game penalty previously, very inconsequential at this point because of the score of the game, 26 to 14 pit leading with only 45 seconds. But sometime down the line, that delay of game penalty can be costly when you want the clock to run. That's the most important thing about a penalty. Late in a game, it stops the clock. And you certainly don't want a delay of game penalty if you only have a one or two or three point lead. I think the message got to the sideline. Bob Mady down there heard the, pa the Panther coaches in the press box screaming, and I think he passed a word along to the field judge, hey, you've got to keep your eye on that clock. Yeah, next door, they've forgotten about the telephones. They're just yelling out verbally and making them listen now. Third down and 12. Pitt at the 45-yard line of Washington with 44 seconds left. Wide side option, Tricano keeps. Tricano is going to be hit and drop for a loss on the play. Back at the 49-yard line of Pitt. And so now it'll be fourth down. The clock winds down to 34 seconds and is still rolling, and I believe that may be just about enough. All right, Rick took the slide in the second base five yards from the sideline just before he was going to get hit. Made sure he kept the ball in bounds. That's what he has to do. That loss on the play was for six yards, so we'll call it fourth and 18, pit with the football at its own 49-yard line. Washington making several changes in our defensive array. I don't know whether they're expecting the Panthers to punt the ball, but the clock winds down to five seconds. Pitt will take the delay of game penalty, and that stops the clock at one second. And so they'll march five yards off, and the Panthers now simply just have to fall on the football. That's what they'll do. Tricano will fall on it. They should have the up split backs right off of each hip of Tricano. He will step back one yard, hit the turf, and those backs should come up behind the offensive guards then on the snap to protect their quarterback, Tricano. Panthers will be hosting Navy next week. Plenty of tickets remaining. It'll be a youth day situation at Pitt Stadium, so hope we'll have you aboard at Pitt Stadium. Hope we'll have you aboard on the Panther Network next week if you can't be at the ball game in person. One second remaining. Rick Tricano takes the football, falls down. The Panthers have pulled off the upset. It's a big, big win for Coach Jackie Sherrill, his staff, and this Panthers squad, which now is 5-1 and one and rolling. That's it from Husky Stadium in Washington. The final score, Pitt 26, the Huskies 14. A look at today's game in just a minute. Things have really changed for Howard and me. Now we're finding more interest in our lives every day at Pittsburgh National. We considered a regular passbook savings account because it now pays five and a quarter percent interest. But we decided on a money manager savings account. It pays five and a quarter percent too. But even better, the interest is earned daily and compounded daily. So no matter when we deposit or withdraw, we never lose a penny's interest. We also put a little extra in an investor passbook to earn even more. And we bought one of Pittsburgh National's new four-year certificates. So so now we have more interest than ever, and we do all our banking in one place. Oh, we're so smart, right, Howard? Uh, Howard. When you think about saving, let Pittsburgh National show you how to really save. Howard. Pittsburgh National Bank, member FDIC. Substantial interest penalty for early withdrawals from investor passbook and certificates. Suddenly the criticism that the Panthers could not win the big game is a moot point because they came out here well prepared, they executed very well, they did not turn the football over to my recollection at least once. Do you recall any fumbles or interceptions? I don't recall John? any, Bill. I don't recall any at all. Let me say now, I think this game was won in the first half. Uh, I think Washington controlled the game too much in the second half. And had it not been for the fumble down here on the two-yard line, we were in for a real ball game, and it could have been extremely tough at that time. So the turnovers, as I recall, we got three fumbles and one interception, uh, at least two fumbles and one interception. I know White uh, intercepted one pass in the first half, uh, recovered a fumble, and it was the offense in the first half that kept the ball away from the Washington offense. The defense did a great job. I thought the second half, though, Washington came out fired up, they were winning the line of scrimmage. They were causing the difficulties. They were controlling the ball, and they were giving us everything we wanted. I count five mistakes, six mistakes by the Huskies, and so would have to say that there were 
three interceptions and three fumbles, and so that really helped the Panthers' situation very much. Reviewing the scoring very quickly, Pitt, after a fumble by Steele, White took the ball away from him, started first and ten at the Washington 38 back in the first quarter. They roared down, and Mandy, Randy McMillan got the one-yard touchdown plunge with a minute 27 left of the first quarter, and that put the Panthers on top, seven to nothing. Then, McMillan scored again, a 21-yard touchdown run following an interception by Hugh Green that put the Panthers in business at the 22-yard line of the uh, Washington Huskies, and Mack, uh, one play later, went in 21 yards for the score. Things looked rosy for the Panthers, who were ahead 14 to nothing, but then suddenly, Anthony Allen, a third-team freshman quarterback, on a kick return, went 99 yards, broke a couple of tackles along the way, stayed inbounds, and suddenly it was 14 to 7, and it appeared that the Panthers were in trouble. But then Rick Tricano and the pit offense went to work. We had Big McMillan running for big gainers. Kenny Bowles pulling in receptions. Mike Dombrowski pulled in a key first down reception. So did Clifford Moore. Pitt starting at its own 25. Marched down to allow Mark Schubert to kick a field goal with 32 seconds left of the second quarter. And Pitt had a 17-17, a 17-7 lead, which they preserved into the fourth quarter. Then Schubert, following an interception by middle guard Jerry Boyarski, Kicked a field goal of 43 yards early in the fourth quarter, and it just got over the crossbar. As a matter of fact, hit the crossbar and fell good, and the Panthers led it 20-7. to But Washington wasn't done. They changed quarterbacks and came out with Tom Flick. They started at their own 37-yard line following a fine kick return, and uh, that one by Stevens, and they marched from their own 37 down to the one-yard line on a fourth, and goal at the one steal, dove into the end zone, handed the ball to the official, and with 10.04 left of the ball game, Washington trailed 20-14, to 14, and it seemed that uh, Washington had a chance at that point to win the football game. However, at the pit 43-yard line, Washington fumbled the snap, somehow flicked the quarterback, couldn't find the handle, and JoJo Heath on the safety blitz got in there and got the football. And I tell you what, Flick maybe out of the corner of his eye had seen the safety blitz and said, uh-oh, I've got to get out of the way, and that may have caused the fumbled snap. But anyhow, the Panthers uh, had the football, and then Dan Marino punted into the coffin corner. Washington started at its own six-yard line. On the next play, they fumbled. Greg Meisner recovered at the uh, two-yard line. Two plays later, Artrell Hawkins scored his first touchdown of the year, and the Panthers went ahead and won it by a score of 26 to 14. Bill Hillgrove, along with Johnny Sauer, we'd like to thank our Panther Network crew, our spotter, Sam Shulo, Jr., for the, uh, for the host, Washington Huskies, for the visiting Pitt Panthers, Don DeBlasio of U.S. Air, formerly known as Allegheny Airlines, and our producer, Pete uh, Bill Kelly, our engineer, Pete Shalonis, the Panther Network crew celebrating this big win for Pitt, and Coach Jackie Sherrill will have more on today's game between the Panthers and the Huskies in just a minute. Ever wonder how a professional hawker gets his voice in condition for the big game? We ask one. Peanuts, popcorn, a little beef, fella. Uh, neither, thanks. We were just wondering how a professional hawker gets his voice up for the big game. Well, I can't speak for the rest of the guys, of course, but as for me, I drink Daly's juice. Daly's juice. Right. And does it help? Well, it doesn't hurt. Yes, well, I can see you're drinking it right now. Uh -huh. No sounds bringing the old pipes right back up. Uh, yes, I can hear that. Popcorn. All right, what is it about Daly's juice that seems to help your voice? Who knows? It's got vitamin C in it. I know that. Uh -huh. It's made with natural fruit juice. That can't do you any harm, right? I wouldn't think so. It comes in nine different flavors, but I don't think that's got anything to do with it. Probably not. They also make a concentrate. I use that at home. So, <laughs> folks, take it from a real pro. Before, during, or after the game, or no game at all. Drink Daly's Juice. Right, and maybe one day you, too, will be calling up big ones just like me. Peanuts, popcorn, one more sip, and I may have your job, fella. Come on. Come on, get Daly's. Come on. Come on, get natural. Come up to the natural thing. It was a celebrating band of Pitt Panthers that put Coach Jackie Sherrill up on their shoulders to exit the field here at Husky Stadium. A great moment for Jackie personally because with that win today, he's got a good shot at being in the top ten when the weekly rankings come out on Monday and Tuesday. And he's also established himself and the Pitt Panthers as the number one team in the East. And an Eastern battle is coming up next week. The Navy Meds undefeated in the season coming into Pitt Stadium. It's a youth day. Hopefully a big crowd will be on hand. You know, Bill, it's too bad a coach doesn't uh, have the opportunity to savor a win for too long a period. And I know that Jackie knows the pluses, the advantages, the reason that we made analysis of why this game was won by Pittsburgh this afternoon. One thing he's telling himself now, though, the mental errors at critical times which will have to be eliminated because in close ball games, they're going to cost you. I'm talking about the timeouts, the penalties, the things that occur at the critical times, those mental errors, and I'm sure they will be 
eliminated soon. The final score again, Pittsburgh 26, Washington 14. This is Johnny Sauer. Ron Reininger is next with the college football scoreboard on the Panthers Football Network. Pit Panthers. Brought to you by the employees of Pittsburgh National Bank with 108 community banking offices to serve you. By Nationwide Insurance Agents. For all your insurance needs, life, health, homeowners, see your participating Nationwide Insurance Agent. Nationwide is on your side. By Budweiser. For all you do, this Bud's for you. Open Pantry Food Marts. Climb aboard the Open Pantry Express for the fastest shopping trip in town. Open seven days a week until midnight and buy daily's juice products daily's juices made with natural fruit juices and a bonus of vitamin c Murphy's Mart, Murphy's Mart. that's my friendly discount star quality saving shopping smart discount buys Murphy's Mart. it's raining and you have to get out of your car to open the garage door. Why not let Genie Automatic Garage Door Openers do it for you? At Murphy's Mart, your friendly discount store, you can save over $50 on the chain drive model with automatic light, just $99. Comes with transmitter and receiver and fits doors up to 7 feet high. Save over $42 on the screw drive model with time delay light and Cryptar 2 digital controls, just $157. Fits doors up to 7 feet 6 inches high. Both models sold on a and fit single or double doors. These and more store-wide discounts at Murphy's Mart through Saturday, October 27th. Discount The College Football Scoreboard, brought to you by Crivelli Chevrolet, home of champion deals in the Keys Rocks. Stop in today and see why Crivelli leads the league in sales and service. Here's Ron Reininger. The Pitt the favorite Washington University team in the second half to defeat the Huskies 26-14. It was a particularly sweet victory for Coach Jackie Sherrill's Panthers, who brought their season record to five wins and just one loss. Now Pitt was carrying a 20-7 lead into the fourth quarter, and Washington scored to narrow the gap 20-14. And then, with less than five minutes to play, the Pitt defense forced a fumble that they recovered on the Huskies' two-yard line. Greg Meissner covering that ball. It's second down. Bill Hillgrove calls the play. All right. Here's the give to the deep man. Artrell Hawkins plows in for the Panther touchdown. That made the score. Pitt 26, Washington 14. Improved to be the icing on the cake because a miscue on the kickoff gave Washington the ball on the Panthers 45, and Panther fans were biting their nails. But the Panthers rose to the occasion and won their biggest game so far this year. Randy McMillan, Big Mac, scored two touchdowns. Mark Schubert kicked two field goals to round out the Panthers' scoring. Pitt 26, Washington 14. Another college football games today. West Virginia 27, Tulane 17. Penn State 35, Syracuse 7. Southern California 42, Notre Dame 23. Michigan 27, Illinois 7. Ohio State 59, Wisconsin nothing. Purdue 14, Michigan State 7. North Carolina 35, North Carolina State 21. Miami of Ohio 21, Bowling Green 3. Brown 28, Cornell 7, Colgate 17, Princeton 6, Yale 37, Columbia 7, Clemson 28, Duke 10, Auburn 38, Georgia Tech 14, Dartmouth 10, Harvard 7. At the halftime, Toledo 14, Ohio University 6, finals again, Villanova 29, Holy Cross 14, Virginia Tech 34, Richmond nothing, Wake Forest 25, Maryland 7, Baylor 55, Army nothing, Minnesota 24, Iowa 7, Temple 35, Cincinnati 14. I'm Ron Reininger. The College Football School Board continues in a minute. Crivelli Chevrolet, home of champion deals, is off and running with their complete lineup for 1980. In Crivelli's spacious showroom, you can see every new model, including the front-wheel drive Citation, the car destined to be the most popular car of the new decade. Or look over Crivelli's selection of 1980 trucks. Whatever you need in the way of a tough Chevy truck, Crivelli has it. Economy six-cylinder pickups and versatile four-wheel drive blazers or 12-passenger sport van wagons. 
Mustangs and the ever-popular Chevy cargo van. See them all at Crivelli's Truck Center. And remember, when you deal with Crivelli Chevrolet, you get the complete VIP service Crivelli is famous for. Crivelli's sales and service teams are unmatched in their desire to satisfy the customer. Stop at Crivelli Chevrolet today, and you'll find out why Crivelli's customers are customers for life. Crivelli Chevrolet, McKee's Rocks Plaza at West Carson Street.